Hello, everybody, and welcome to the episode 12 of Game Session. I'm your host, Jose, or Seth. At the top, I just want to go to remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe, and all the socials. That's over on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Twitter would be the best place to keep up to date with every single person here. Everyone's ads are on screen, description in the description box. Uh, I do look at the analytics. 98% of my views come from people who are not subscribed, so hit the magical red button for for maximum joy. Uh, That applies to most things in life. Uh, today we are joined by Sarah. Hello. Uh, Mesa, who is now revitalized with camera technology. Hello. Uh, Corey, who is very well lit. Cheers. In more than one way. Uh, today, today's a very special episode. Uh, we are joined by T-Man from uh, T-Man Plays Games slash uh, the Make Me a Gamer podcast. Hi. And uh, it's also a very special day because uh, I think this might be the first episode we've had Blaine back as the official slash unofficial fifth member. I think I gave you like a special tag in the Discord, just poking fun at it. But uh, it is your birthday. So. How how is your birthday going? Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Uh, thank you. Birthday! Happy. Hi, hi viewers! Thank you. It has been. I almost forgot that I could cuss for a second. It's been a fucking good day, uh, all things considered. <laughs> I've got some rough life shit going on that y'all y'all know. I don't need to go into it, but like, um, got Texas Roadhouse today. Hell yeah. Playing some games today. Friggin' relaxing. Talked to my boyfriend and watched Adventure Time earlier. It's it's been a good day. I literally don't even know the last time I had Texas Roadhouse, but that like you saying that well, just then, brought back memories. Well, then your soul's been dead <laughs> since then, Corey. <laughs> don't, don't don't listen to Jose. He gets mad at people for eating boneless wings. I feel they're like not boneless have... wings. They're just saucy chicken nuggets, <laughs> and they're delicious. I feel like I need what to have problem? Texas Roadhouse now. I've never had it, so I don't even know what I'm missing. It's, You've never had it. It's an experience. No. It's an experience. <laughs> it's some of it's some of the best like Applebee's Chili's grade chain food stuff ever. Mm. You think you know a person, and then they up and tell you they've never had Texas Roadhouse. You don't <laughs> have to reevaluate this whole. You don't know aesthetic until you're crunching peanuts on the floor under under your boot. That is the text of And you walk past signs that say, if you have an allergy to peanuts, don't eat here. You will not. <laughs> <laughs> or or you you eat the peanuts out of the communal peanut bucket, which most likely if you've eaten out of that bucket, you can survive going to an anime con and not getting sick. Oh yeah. The communal <laughs> peanut bucket with the communal peanut shell bucket that you're supposed to throw yep. all the shells in. If you've eaten from that bucket, you most likely have a ringworm. Ringworm. Yes. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Never gone away, you still have it. <laughs> don't don't ruin this for me, Cor. <laughs> as Is soon that- as I can go back in there, I'm going back. Okay. <laughs> Is that how I got a tapeworm? <laughs> Probably. Yes. Honestly, I wouldn't oh, put it past boy. you. Mm. I I will not stand for this slander of uh America's one one of America's national treasures. So. <laughs> T man, uh, you wanted to go ahead and tell everybody who you are, what you do. Uh, yeah, I'm. Well, I'm T man. I uh, I host my my own podcast called Make Me a Gamer, where me and a friend basically talk about random shit each week. Uh, he doesn't play games as much, and so I like. It's basically a perspective thing where like I share him all like the in depth game stuff that I and news that I follow, and he is like. What is a Witcher? I've never heard of this before. Uh, and I just so, want to say he is fucking hilarious. He, he yeah. is such a fucking joy to listen to. Oh yeah, I, I he is absolutely one of he has some of the strangest brain connections I have ever heard. Like he will make connections with things that uh, I, I could never like plan it. Like I I never go into an episode with a script because. He he is, he's that imaginative <laughs> and uh, yeah. Anyway, but I uh, I also do a little bit of writing occasionally. Uh, I have a T Man Writes is my website, and I occasionally do like game reviews and you know think pieces and stuff like that. And that that's it. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you here, and it should be a uh, should be a fun show. Yeah, I, glad to I be think here. for the next when we eventually get back to our game awards you might have to take cues from uh what was the one that harvey did where was it 
the game you take home to your parents. Yeah, yeah. And game he just went into home. a crazy freaking segue, just like, <laughs> well, this is a game you're taking home. That's basically telling your parents this is who you're fucking. I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, oh, God. Oh. I, mm. He is a beautiful soul. <sighs> yeah, that, That's oh, a good way to describe him. So we're going to go ahead and... Um, go through the news uh, relatively quickly today just because there's a lot to get to in terms of uh, what we've been playing. But uh, first off, uh, here's a quick little game I've been wanting to do for for a little bit. It's going to call we're going to call it the uh, Metacritic uh, launch game guess. I don't know. I didn't make a formal title. Um, so without looking at the document I provided for everyone, uh, I want everyone to guess what the Metacritic score is for the following titles. Uh, what does everyone think Bug Snacks got? 80. Uh, 75. 80. 75. 80, I think. 100. 73. Darn it. <laughs> Damn, How good were they playing with that? Damn, no I one ex- won. I was, ex- I was expecting higher. It got a lot of uh, praise, like even before it came out. I mean, out, if we're but... playing based on prices, right rules, then Mesa won. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. So. Well, Price is Right rules is if you go over, it's it's, it's null. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, no you one won. You have to be well, the closest without going over. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, so no one won. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Barker won. Bob Barker. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> uh, Miles Morales, what did it 100. get? 90. Uh, uh, I'm going to say uh, 85. 100. 100. I, I thought it got Mesa. Like 82. Mesa, right on the dot. Oh. You're not cheating, are you? No. I wouldn't <laughs> cheat. I'm not a cheater. Come on. <laughs> I don't cheat. All right. Let, let's see if you can pull a hat trick off. Demon Souls. Uh, 93. 15. I'm going to say... 15. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say a 97. 88. Oh, damn. I was reverse right. I didn't get a chance to go. Wait, what was yours? I didn't say it yet, but I was going to say like 80. Sarah, what was your guess? 93. You're the closest. 92. Hell yeah! <laughs> Sorry, Mesa. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'm not cheating. 80, 83? 20. 70. 20. Uh, I'm going to say... 40. <laughs> I'm going to say 70, 78. Sarah, uh, off by one point, but you're the closest. 82. <laughs> I'm getting there. Every season I thought. I'm getting there. Astro's Playroom. 96. I'm thinking like 90, yeah. 100. 100. I'm thinking 90. I'm, I'm still sore about those time trials, Corey. Don't challenge me. <laughs> How many times, times have you tried to beat those? Uh, you know what? I I did it the one time just because I wanted to play it, and then Corey beat my score. I'm just like, oh, let me see if I can beat Corey, and then I did, and then Corey just like went at it for hours. Ooh. Yeah, he put in the most effort. <laughs> I really tried. <laughs> uh, T man, Blaine guesses at the score. Ninety two. One hundred. I think T man, you might be the closest. It's at uh, eighty three. Oh wow! Really? That, that low? Really? I'm surprised. I'm surprised. A little bit lower than I was. Thinking. Is there like a general reason why? Or I wonder. If-, um, if 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 I had to make an educated guess, it would be, uh, as much as I love the nostalgia, it's I don't want to say it's a subpar platform, but compared to other stuff on the market, it's not as intensive. Right. Well, because it was wonder- just really a tech demo, so mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. And it's also a pack-in game, so not as many people may have reviewed it. But that would, but that would, that would, that would be more towards it going higher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I I was betting on that with my ninety because I was like, you know, you just got the PS Five, you're feeling good, you got the free thing to play while things are downloading, and it's cute. It's going to be yeah. a high score, but. That Meta- was a good day for us, Mason. <laughs> Metacritic tends to be pretty us. Uh, non-subjective like they 
at least mm-hmm. from my well, I, yeah. the, the one issue with Metacritic is that a lot of more uh, critical outlets don't necessarily use review scores. So in that scenario, it actually tends to skew a little bit on the higher spectrum oh, does it? Okay. than what the consensus would uh, mm-hmm. would be otherwise. Yeah. Why do you think uh, I keep throwing out hundreds and really absurdly low numbers? <laughs> uh, Gears Tactics. Uh, 83. 50. Tactics. I'm going to say 75. You know what? No, 45. 69. <laughs> <laughs> What's your number, T-Man? 420? Uh, flat 80. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Flat 420. Eight. That's what I guess. Yeah. Uh, you know what, T-Man? I'll, I'll give you the serious answer because you got it right on the dot. 80. Damn. Oh, close again. Sack boy. Uh, 700. Zero. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> 100. Um, 73. Yeah, like 75, somewhere in there. Sarah got it right on the dot with 78. Nice. Three for Are you sure you're not cheating? No, I'm not. I'm just literally throwing numbers out there when I think fits. Man, I really should have put the answers in a separate document or something. <laughs> or I, I'm that. not cheating, I swear. Like, hands are right here. Like, they're not moving anything. <laughs> You don't need your hands to see, Sarah. <laughs> I have to sort of, I'm not cheating. Uh, Godfall. Uh, I'm six. I know. 75. 55. Ouch. <laughs> People hate me. This is, this is the one that I actually, I think I know. So I'm going to um, respectively um, refuse to answer this one. A man of honor. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> well, excuse me? <laughs> I'm going to actually seriously guess 69. <laughs> <laughs> Good guess. I don't, I don't think you can seriously guess 69 in any situation. I, I, it's applicable sometimes. <laughs> Blaine, any any guesses? 69.1. Uh, T-Man, you, you're, you're the proud owner of a 69. You were... You were uh, Wait, no, were you? Wait, no. Ma- who yeah. guessed uh, T- T- Man who guessed 55? Uh, Corey. Uh, that's... Wait, 55? They're, they're both seven points off, so I think it's a tie then, right? Because it's a 62. Oh, oh, no, I guessed 55. Yeah. Yeah, so you're both equal, but T-Man does have the cooler number, so I'm going to go ahead and give it to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was the original, uh, just saying that. <laughs> cyberpunk on cyberpunk on pc specifically uh i'm gonna guess like in 87 yes, on PC. 7d you, have, like you have to remember it's pc like the camera so 7d hey 80, pc was the most stable version of it so uh, mm. that's why i'm going for most stable also doesn't mean stable well <laughs> i wasn't paying attention what game are we talking about cyberpunk, cyberpunk on pc uh, I'm I'm I'm. Dog shit, are you ten? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> zero, zero, so zero, Sarah, zero. You said eighty-seven, Mesa. What was yours? Seven D, like the camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah, seven D. Seven D. More, more like it doesn't work. Whatever. Who cares? This was one. Zero out of gamers rise up. <laughs> Corey. 81. T-Man. 83. Corey wins. Oh, wait. Wait, what was... No, wait, no, never mind. Scratch that. What was your guess, Corey? 81. Oh, wait, no. You hella lost. Oh. Uh, Sarah, you guessed 87. It was 90. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is 90? much higher than I thought it would have been. It's much I, higher 90? than the game deserves. I thought it dropped a lot more than that, huh? This is going off my notes from like two weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> should have said that. <laughs> See, off. this is so you can't Google it. Would have changed it. <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> this is reflective of the launch period, not any fixes that have happened since then. This product podcast is brought to you from the fine folks at C-Date. No, it's not. Fuck those <laughs> pieces of shit. I, I, I'm just going to say it's currently 86 for currently PC. 86 it's been it's even lower oh, sarah still would have won for what it's <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, it's 
The PS4 version. Uh, 30 something. I'm going to go with like 34. Two. I'm going to go with like 14. NA. I I think by default then uh, Sarah wins. It's at 50. Oh, that's that's higher than I thought it was going to be. That's a whole 40 points lower than its PC counterpart. That's pretty ridiculous. It's almost like the game wasn't runnable at all. (laughs) It's PS5. I almost like you didn't even play it. It, I haven't had any crashes on PC lately, but it's still buggy as all fuck. Yeah, I was just but, playing it. I've been playing it the past couple days. I've only had one crash out of like three days, but I have had people like shift through walls. So, <laughs> so shit wrong well, well, with it. Well, listening to your experience and then some other people that just like, yeah, I'm playing it. I mean, it only crashed like 12 times, but yeah. it's, it's all good. I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> if I'm enjoying I mean, myself, that's I'm not good. Myself. One I crash isn't good. I beat the game a week ago, so now this game has pretty much been purged from my system. Good. Um, the evil has been should, defeated. I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm clean. I've, got, I've gone through a detox. <laughs> uh, I right, literally haven't, going... haven't been able to play it all that much because it keeps crashing on my PS5. Damn. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. well. Have you been uh, playing it all, Tima? No, I, I didn't get Cyberpunk. I'm not interested in playing it. Uh, Good. <laughs> See, this is I have a reputation for bringing smart people on my show. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and get through some of the news quickly. Uh, BioHair, BioHair, BioWare heads leave. Uh, Casey Hudson and Mike Dar have both left the company, uh, with the former being the head of the Mass Effect franchise and Mike Dar being executive producer over Dragon Age. Uh, it's w- worth noting that the Mass Effect Legendary Collection is slated to come out this year with a uh, follow-up title coming out at a later date, as well as um, Dragon Age 4 coming out at a later date. Both of these had trailers at the Game Awards. Do you want um, me to help with, with this one? Because I helped look look this up. Yeah, if you just want to go through it real quick. Yeah, so um, this the one thing that a lot of people know and also bioware fans know is this this actually isn't the first time that casey hudson has has left the company uh he left yeah he left about let me get the exact date for you the first time he left was right before anthem had come out if i remember correctly um it was like literally right before anthem didn't he Uh, leave it like the middle of its development and then come back to finish development like years later yeah so he left right in the middle which made people suddenly start start to realize what's up with 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 anthem sadly we found out and then he came back a couple months after anthem released to help i apparently fix it uh but then he was moved on to the new mass effect as soon as that started development and he and he was pretty open on he was working on the new mass effect but then he then quit at the same time as he quit mike mike uh mark dara who had been working on the past dragon age franchise and had moved up to the producer role in dragon age uh four whatever it's called uh he actually left too uh but uh ea has come out and said that uh with them leaving does not apparently it doesn't spell any trouble on dragon age or on the mass effect legendary collection uh, it has given a little bit of panic to to people about the new Mass Effect title because Casey Hudson was attached to that. He was working on that. Uh, as of right now, the new person running uh, uh, running Mass Effect will be Mike Mike Gamble, who has worked on every single entry of the franchise, including Andromeda and Dragon Age. Will be led by Samantha Ryan who, after doing research on on her, she has an extremely extensive background. She helped get Fear off of the ground back, a, back in the day, the first mm-hmm. Fear. And at the moment, she was at Warner Warner Brothers. I couldn't, and I think she worked Batman from what I could find. But before she's working on Dragon Age, she was, she was at EA working on the Plants vs. Zombies franchise. But now she's in charge of all of Dragon Age. <laughs> hmm. So, uh, I, 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 I'm hmm? sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm I'm just saying, as a big Bioware fan, I'm, I'm a big Dragon Age person. I'm a big Mass Effect person. Seeing who they have in charge now, it sucks that Casey, Casey Hudson left. It sucks that uh, Mark, Mark Dara left. But seeing who they're putting in charge, 
I'm not exactly fully worried, especially after finding out uh, Gamble's history, especially with uh, Fear. Uh, if I think she did all the Fear games, if I remember, or just like the first two, but she has an extensive background, so I'm not worried ab about it. And putting, uh, uh, oh, sorry, Ryan, then putting Gamble in charge of Mass Effect, I'm not worried either, seeing as he has worked on every single one of the games. And it's cool to have an extra perspective that's not Hudson. Not that I don't like Hudson. I love his, I love his writing. But he also needs to choose where the hell he's going to go. Because this dude apparently can just pick and choose at whim if he wants to leave or not. I think... Well, for someone that's at a studio for that long, it's only natural you want to spread your wings to what other new opportunities. And he probably got offered a giant lump of sum, a uh, um, uh, lump of money to uh, to come back to try to help out Anthem, considering how much of a shit show it was when it launched, uh, let alone what it was like in the middle of development. But I've never been into the um, what am I? Why am I blanking? The uh, Dragon Age series. I just never managed to get into it. I can't, I don't really have an opinion on it one way or the other because of that. But Mass Effect is incredibly near and dear to me, and it's sad to see that the series is stagnated so bad. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I trust the talents of the new people that are coming on, but that studio, and this goes for every studio, um, af after so much time has passed and there's so much turnover, it's fundamentally not the same studio anymore. Yeah, and I We're mean, I'm not worried about Dragon Age for whatever it's going to be called. We already know that it's a sequel to Inquisition just from the story that we know of it. To me, I'm more wondering what's going to happen to the like unannounced Mass Effect project, that which I personally thought was announced way too early. Plus, we already knew it existed. Like They had already posted that screenshot of that ship about two months ago. So we had already seen it. We didn't need this little teaser that maybe had Liara in it. I felt it was more interesting to see the, to see the dragon age stuff than it was the mass effect stuff but i mean i'm it's not that i'm worried about it. it's just andromeda was like okay like i personally didn't have any issues with it i know friends who absolutely hated it and it killed their love of the love of the franchise so dragon age i'm not worried about mass effect they have some shit they gotta do they got some stuff they gotta clean like they need to get people back on that franchise because I don't know I how think they're going to come back. <laughs> I, th I think a lot of it just comes down to uh, production schedules and uh, production management. Not not so much like the individual talent of any given dev or like, um, I guess, like the creative director. It's, it's a lot of mismanagement going on. But um, let's go ahead and jump on over to the next one because it's a big and beefy one. Uh, we didn't, we were in the middle of our awards when the game awards was going on and they had a whole bunch of, uh, announcements going on. So if, if, if I miss out on anything, feel free to go ahead and jump in if there's anything that, uh, speaks to you. But as for me, I think the big, the big takeaway for me at least was, uh, our boy Steve from Minecraft got announced for Smash. Don't you mean Sephiroth? Yes, I do. <laughs> but yeah. That's okay. Just, so, like, funny thing about that, Blaine and I were watching the Game Awards together. Like, we just, like, hung out and watched it together. And our fucking reaction to Sephiroth was the best. Like, both of See, us I, lost it. <laughs> I, I wish I had been watching it live, because I was just at work, like, refreshing the page, see what what's happening. And I just love, like, I, I haven't even... I'm not sure if he's even available yet. He is. Um, he's been available he for, for yeah. like like, a couple of weeks. But um, ev everything about the trailer is just so fucking perfect. The way it uses the music, the uh, the Advent version of One Winged it Angel. Was just it's the Advent Children fight. Like that's all it was. They yeah, they, they use ex they use exact visual cues from it. Remade it. They he stabbed Mario <laughs> through the fucking heart. Mario's oh wait, no, it's just, dead. It's just his fucking uh, overall sleeve. Mario's dead. Luigi must put his corpse back together. Isn't Luigi already <laughs> dead though? Like didn't. <laughs> nah. They've killed Mario and Luigi in like every trailer they've made for Smash Brothers since like the DLC started. And yet Kirby stands well, alone. Wait, what? Wasn't it the cast? Was it the Castlevania one where Luigi just gets fucking murked by death? Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Damn. And Mario. Um, Steve left Mario to get blown up by creepers. And. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Ridley stabbed Mario through the heart, like directly. 
Like there was oh, no. Fuck, I forgot his, about that. Oh his, god, there was no right. through his overalls. He was fucking killed. <laughs> like we trailers are getting fucking morbid. <laughs> now, he'll just wake up in like two hours. He'll be fine. Yeah, it's a couple one ups. Mm-hmm. I can only imagine the look on fucking Nitro's face if he saw this shit live. He'd he'd be freaking the fuck out. <laughs> so then, does does the release of Sephiroth mean that that's the end of Volume Two of Fighters? Or no, no I think two more. Two believe. more? Yeah, I believe there's three more. Three more. Three more. Oh man, okay. there's six. I, I, can't, second I can't keep up. I, I lost track. So I was like, yeah, I don't. I mean, this, I don't care. <laughs> this is just fulfilling. Games. Yeah. This is just fulfilling my childhood fantasy of seeing. My two favorite characters, uh, Sephiroth and Steve, going at it in, in Mortal Kombat. It's, it's, it's a dream come true. Uh, there's a trailer for a new Perfect Dark game, which mm-hmm. people were, were, were incredibly excited for. I was um, stoked. I was... Yeah. Um, yeah. So was I, I. I remember playing Perfect Dark for the N64 with my cousins, and then when my cousin got an Xbox 360 and he played Perfect Dark Zero, I was just so enthralled with watching him. And so when they yeah. announced that, I was like, dude, I'm ready. Let's be a super spy. I'm ready. Hmm. Like, <laughs> it was to me, I played the original Perfect Dark when it came out on the Xbox Live arcade, like fucking forever ago. That was how I played it. And I still loved it. And like, even though it was just like a concept, the fact that Microsoft hasn't forgotten about that franchise is still really cool. And I would like to see what the xbox series x can do with the like with the like like earth over overtaking everything again i would love to so, see what, how that can work in like real time i thought that was i'm glad they're actually I was, I thought good. that was interesting because like i remember me and sarah watching that trailer and trying to the whole time we yeah were like, we didn't know what, what it was is this like, game? what is this and, and then, then finally the when it's like joanna dark and it says perfect dark we were, yeah we were just she was the first one to be like what the fuck? i was like what are you talking yeah. about and then all of a sudden, yeah, i saw the cyberdyne logo and i was like oh my god they're actually doing it i didn't dark. i don't think i don't think anybody thought that microsoft would bring back perfect dark yeah. Well, so it's that. been it's been rumored th- for the past couple of years. Sh- not shitting you because a perfect dark Twitter account was registered around two years ago to a Microsoft e, e- email. Like someone looked up the email for this account, and it was a Microsoft e- email, and the account was huh. locked, and it was locked for around a year and a half. And then the one person following the account was the guy who created Perfect Dark back at Rare. And people were like, why does this account exist? And it stayed locked for about a year and a half. Then it unlocked. It, it it had no tweets. And that's when people started wondering, what if Microsoft's new studio is working on a perfect dark? And then the then I guess there were some leaks last year that basically said that that's what was happening. And they just like actually confirmed it at the Game Wars. Well, I feel that like that sense. stuff's so hard to keep track of, too, because a lot of that's just covering bases, especially with patents co- covering trade well, and whatnot. Fact, so sometimes it's a little oh, hard no, to that, tell. That was what sort of got people talking, especially when someone, like, Googled it and found out that, that there was a Microsoft account tied to it. That was when people were, were like, okay, this can't be, like, a fake thing if there's, like, an actual Microsoft person. Well, and also we have to Again. remember that – we also have to remember that – um uh, what is it? Game reporters and rumor and rumor pushers uh, who do these deep, deep investigations on games that that have yet to even be announced. Um, they're getting better. Like they're getting a lot better yeah. at their job, mm-hmm. and so these companies have to get a lot better at hiding it and covering their bases. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And because I, I'm, I'm gonna later on in the show, I'm gonna bring up a, a, a theory that I have, and we're gonna talk about it. But it's. It's huge. It's kind of like conspiracy theory level shit, but like I'm, I want to talk about it. <laughs> if you want to talk conspiracy theories, get your ass on on over. I'm to not that Corey. kind of conspiracy, Jose. <laughs> if that is your real name. But, uh, <laughs> just, okay, just to keep but things we moving. Like, to the most um, one. I, I'm we just so surprised. To the rock and arc, rock arc. No, not the rock. Vin Diesel. My God. No, we're not. We're not Diesel. there yet. You can't Vin jump Diesel around. Arc, no, no, we, we are. We are. We, I remember sitting like this. We are going in order. Like, oh, okay, whatever. Huh? I went. We were like, what is this? We go arc. I'm like, cool. <laughs> is he? Is, is he like going to be I an MVP Di- giving Vin- us quest when we like go up to a butt naked, being like, Vin Diesel, give us a quest to get pants. <laughs> oh no. 
I think Vin Diesel has a proven track record in giving a shit about games and being hands on with it. And I and uh, I'd have to relook it back up, but I believe he owns his own. Uh, not I don't think it's an outright video game company, but they do some actual work on them or consulting you know or that something he like is that. Like a producer on Earth too, right? <laughs> like he has his own he, title. Apparent- well, yeah, he, he he was a producer on the uh, he Riddick. He also Diesel apparently is a giant fucking nerd. Sorry, yeah. man, go on. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, he plays. He played a lot of World of Warcraft with um, fuck, what's his name? Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul Walker. He, he apparently has played like thousands of hours in the original arc. Um, so like that's why he's yeah. apparently involved in arc two. And in the last arc update, because there was like an update right right after the uh, game game awards they said oh hey figured out this glitch fix this glitch and then in, in in like a second tweet literally said vin diesel found this glitch and brought it to our attention he's the one that found it like he's like he he, he like has his own title like, like he's not fully working on the game but he has this like specific title on it it's so weird and that was such a weird fucking trailer it looked so the blood looked really stupid it was really long and Blaine and I were just like, what the fuck is this? Is this like you want to know? Plus, like, you want to know my first instinct when I saw that trailer before I saw the arc logo? Did you, I was are you like, say Dino, Dino Crisis? Because I no, I thought it was going to be a Turok remake. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't think of that, but that makes more sense I than whatever that, I thought. But I was I like, oh, it's it. Turok, and Vin Diesel's going to be Turok. That makes sense. <laughs> like, I guess. Like, yeah, kind of glad it wasn't that because we don't. Know. We don't need a non-native person being Turok. <laughs> yeah. Also, also, I wait. Is Turok yeah, a person? Yes. Well, yes, it's a, like in the is game. The dude, is it? Is it? Is that how it goes? Turok is. Yeah. It, Turok, Turok is, is a like. A ty- it's it's Turok is like a name in the sense that, that like there are many different people that take up the role of Turok. Okay. But it's usually okay. a. Is a Turok that- like? Like dinosaur it's Batman, like a native, like American type person, time traveling. Yeah, it's know? it's oh, always yeah. been a Native American, regardless yeah. of what game you're playing. That's why I would just be like, oh, I mean, I don't know what Vin Diesel's ethnicity is, so like I could but, be wrong. But or, 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 also, Diesel. like after that, like there's just nothing personally that I have found funnier than the the title arc the animated series. I yeah. just, I just, every time Who I was see it, I, for that? I, I, I like, it's so funny. I can't laugh at it. Like who's, who's on Twitter I going can. like, man, you know what we need? You know, no, no, Blaine, Arc survival Blaine, you're animated not series. Thinking wide enough. Which of the seven year old kids who play Ark said, Arc? I need an Ark cartoon mm-hmm. that's hella violent. Which <laughs> beautiful animation. Like it looked like a Don Bluth yeah. movie. Like, Oh my goodness! I like it works. Sarah, it's serious. What? Sarah, so you're you're super into like fan theories. Is there? Please tell me there's a fan theory that uh, Dominic Toretto, the name of the character that Vin Diesel plays in Fast and Furious, he's just driving so fast off off of the fucking okay, no. diesel in his car. You know, because you know, f- fuel is is made from fo- it's, it's fossil fuels, so that means it's dinosaurs. No, no. He's just going so fast, he time travels back. I said it was yeah, Fast and, and Furious Zero. Zero, the first family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's I mean, Jesus Christ. That's the second dumbest theory I've ever heard. Because the dumbest theory is my theory that I've held on to that the crossfire X single Which player campaign is is, is is just, the crossfire X um, single player campaign being worked on by Remedy is just a fucking facade and it's actually going to be uh, the, a new Max Payne game, but it's not Max Payne. It's Alex Casey. I am okay. Listen, we can't not talk about theory. All right, we, we got to move on. Right, Blaine has been for every remedy theory so far. Hence, no. why I believe her and this crazy theory that she had. Blaine, Blaine is a prophet of the I, I predicted <laughs> Alex Casey being a real human in the control universe. So, <laughs> all right. 
Back, back for Blood has been revealed. The uh, creators of Left 4 Dead, Turtle Rock, have uh, revealed this at the Game Awards, which, you know what? I think I'm the only one here that gives no, a flying fuck it. about no. Left 4 Dead. Of course not. I, I love Damn, wow. Good I, was I was glad that they got out of Valve. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. every time I brought up Left 4 Dead before, everyone else is silent. Now you're coming out of the woodworks. Now now that your savior I wasn't, is I born. Been here I was there from the beginning. I have been here before. I That's know. true. Yeah, Team Man, I, I will give T Man credit. He's never been here. <laughs> I, I I forgive T Man for. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. stop you right there, Ray, and I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you this little uh, this little ditty, and that um, assumptions make an ass out of you and me. So <laughs> you're not my uncle, Corey. <laughs> it could be. All I'm saying is I've been playing Left 4 Dead 2 consistently since it came out, mods and all. And I tell people like, look, it is a re- if you have a Steam account, it is a fucking requirement that you own Left 4 Dead 2 because it goes on sale for like 99 cents mm-hmm. all the goddamn time. I need, I need to ask, so well, it, how did anyone here get into the alpha that they had? I did. Okay. It was amazing. Can talk about that like, I am jelly. really, really quickly. How did you like it? Because I I, no I read so that I a lot of people said that it was good, it is, but that it definitely needs more like work. I mean, it's an alpha, so it is what it is, but it, it is the follow-up successor to uh, Left 4 Dead that... Um, or, I'm sorry, not, not sure I said it. The spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead that we've been needing for... What Left 4 Dead 2 came out 2009, mm-hmm. so 11 years, 10 years uh, at the later part of this year. But yeah, it's okay. it's damn good, and uh, it's a requirement that everyone on this panel buys it and plays it. With <laughs> Did me. you? See, well, we have to organize what console? Number one, number yeah. two. Because I PC no, PC is not going to happen. Um, I don't have a good PC. <laughs> crossplay, oh, crossplay, then that's fine. Um, did y'all see these people getting really mad? Be like, I can't believe they're ripping off Left 4 Dead, and this is so terrible, and Valve should be so mad. <laughs> and then people just being like, are, are you fucking serious right now? <laughs> it's it's not like Valve's going to do anything with it. Come on. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's also the same Valve. studio. Just being like, hey, we're, we're out of Valve's fucking like, control. Now we're actually making a game we want to make. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, there was a trailer for Dragon Age Four. Anyone? Yes, any I have many on feelings, that, but I'm not going to go into all of them because we would be here forever. All I'm going to say is, if Varric is back, Bioware let us romance him for the love of fucking god. It's been three, two games, two and a half games, and also D- D- Solus is a dumb egg, and I want to push him off. Just shove him in crap. I, I have to ask, based off your track record of uh, adoring problematic is fictional problematic. men, is Varric a Varric good boy? Varric is wonderful. Varric's a good boy, and Bioware's just never let us romance him. But um, I'm very interested to see how they tie in save files from Inquisition, especially since it's going to most likely be like a PS5 exclusive. Uh, I'm, that's all that I'm interested in, and like how they're going to do that, because this is a full on sequel to it, to like Inquisition. So, and I'm like 99% sure that what you chose in Inquisition is going to matter in this. So I'm very interested to see how they do it. And I can't wait to see all the new party members and who I'm going to smooch. And that's it. I'm very excited for <laughs> Jack Mage. I, I love that franchise with all of my heart. And I'm just excited to see the like new directions that they take it in and everything. All right, I'm banking on Corey and uh, and Sarah for this next one. Uh, Evil Dead, the game announced. Jose, I'm offended right now. It's a, yeah, uh, I'm uh, offended. Well, I don't know your I don't know your movie history, boy. Uh, yeah, Evil, Evil Dead, Dead. Just, man. Evil Dead, the game. Got you. Okay. It yeah. looks fun. It looks yeah. fun. Great. I mean, it, uh-huh. it just it's everything. It's a game that honestly you really shouldn't take too seriously and just have fun with it like it's, yeah it's, especially since it has characters from like every movie including the 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 like new one yeah the tv uh, yeah, show like, TV show the, army uh, army of darkness and the new like re reboot movie which is the yeah. 2013 one oh, wow yeah it's, it 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 has uh what's her name's brother the like dude uh, the i would rather have what's her name yeah, me too. Wait, what about the me show? Too. What about the show? Did we? See uh, the show? I think the chick from the show. Yeah, it has uh, yeah. Ke- what's what's her name? Kelly. Oh, that's good. I think is in there. Yeah, the chick. I would take her or Pablo. The, show, the brother from Pablo is a the, sweet boy. The brother from the new movie, The Night from the End of Army of Darkness, and then 
ash. So this, so this is throwing cannon out the fucking window, this is, and I'm here for it. <laughs> this is interesting, watch it, though. Watch when it be a sequel can, to the TV show, though, because right. Sarami is fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> When you guys can, there's a. Uh, I, I managed to see it in February before all this shit went down. Um, before the before times, um, there's a musical that they put on. I, I'm not sure I how far it. across the uh, United States they go. Yeah, yeah. I watched I, the one in San I, Jose. I, I it was saw, fucking phenomenal. Um, I missed it when it was in New York, and I've never regretted mu- anything more in my life. I was in the splatter zone, it's so, so good. I got hit with fake with fake blood the entire thing, and it was amazing. <laughs> mm. It was it was a lot of fun, dumb, but like the good kind of dumb. I'll say this much: um, it's interesting that this game is is becoming uh, or becoming into fruition. I'm not even sure that's a real sentence. Um, or coming into fruition. I'm sure Ash would call you a nerd for using <laughs> yes. that. Um, but no, because because Ash is also licensed by Dead by Daylight, so it's like. I don't know the legalities behind it. I'm sure they had to they had to cut a deal or something with the studio that makes Dead by Daylight um, because they already have Ash licensed. But you know, I'm not. I'm, I I would assume it's not an exclusive not, license. No. It also you looks like they have Ash from. Oh, I don't know about that. I know that um, like Dead by Daylight has Ash specifically from the the show while this ash seems to be either either from uh either from evil dead 2 or from uh, army of darkness before he gets his like armor and shit yeah so it's like it's totally different entities i guess in that sense yeah two different entities i'm just i can't believe this game exists like when literally when the trailer happened i remember just saying to sarah like I nobody asked for this, but I wanted it, and I, yeah. I didn't know I wanted it until I saw it because I never expected something like this. I wanted happen. this. Uh, the company working on the game a is a uh, saber. Okay. So then, saber interactive. The last, the last thing they did was the uh, was a World War Z. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, so that then, makes yeah. sense. Huh? So, because I only saw the trailer like once, and so then, what kind of like gameplay is it? My guess, it's going to be a World War Z style. That's just my guess. World War Z is a World War Z is a hell of a game. Yeah, so I'm more than confident through, like, that's, it's going to be every confident. Evil Dead movie, including Army of Darkness and including the TV show. God, I hope because... we go through Army of Darkness. I really <laughs> hope we go through Army of Darkness. Shoot <laughs> skeletons. Yes. Shoot skellies. That's the thing I haven't even thought of is like we so we know it's gonna be like a Left for Dead like if it's gonna be from that studio who made the World War Z thing and it also just looks like a Left for Dead like anyway. But like I'm just sitting here like man, now that you mentioned that, like, oh yeah, because if they have like actual narrative levels, how is that gonna be? Like, are you gonna have like the Army of Darkness chapter and you're just like mm-hmm. knocking over zombies and skeletons and like using like melee but also like shooting them because you have guns for no reason? It's true. All right, moving on. Uh, the upcoming Monster Hunter film, written by uh, Paul W. S. Anderson of Resident Evil movie uh, Infamy or Fame, depending how you feel about those. I think there's like two or three of them that are good uh, cheese fests. Uh, it got banned in China a single day after its release That's in the country. Right. Yeah, and that stems from a incredibly. St- stupid like unnecessary joke where uh, there's two soldiers there's one that's asian one that's white and uh i believe the asian one makes a pun uh, he's referring to his to his knees as chinese you know it's just it's, oh, a, it's the dumbest fucking low bar joke it's you so go bad. for it's like a joke that a 10 year old would make it's a joke that i had to rewatch they, the clip a couple times because i thought i didn't get it and uh and they they edited it they edited it out of the um the Chinese release, and they replaced it with uh, a line of men have gold under their knees and only kneel to the heavens and their mother. So, like, they knew that it was going to be offensive. Like, one, it's already offensive as, as is, but you knew that it really wasn't going to fucking fly well in China, so you went out of your way to hide it. Um, so, yeah, it, it got banned, and it's been getting review-bombed like fucking crazy on Steam. Um, Capcom apparently is kind of distance themselves from the entire thing and Which saying uh, weird, they don't fucking there's approve DLC this. of Mila Jovich in Monster Hunter World. Yeah. Oh my god. In, 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 in Monster Hunter World and she even voiced the character too. Mm-hmm. So like she is oh, no. that. that's why the game was being re- re- oh, okay. instead of the film 
because they they had tied the game in with the movie because they because they had been doing all the weird tie-ins with, with like the Witcher and other Capcom titles. They put her in in the game, like she is a playable hunter in 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 the game. Mm-hmm. So that's why the game was being review bought, which I mean rightfully so. But at the same time, I was also reading a thread on Twitter um, about how people think that 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 joke got through Chinese uh, censorship because that should not have gotten through. And Isn't it was the just direct terrible. translation in Chinese like even worse. I think so. Like- well, no, that that's what um, that's what we let they they completely changed the line to translate to. Um, I, I went past it already. Is uh, the f- men have I men have gold under their it. knees and only bow to the heavens and their mother, right? Or yes. kneel to the heavens. Yeah, that's what they changed it to for the Chinese Plus, release. I, so that's like they knew it was offensive and they just yeah, tried to I fucking feel, hide it. I with feel some really bad. Line. I don't remember the the uh, the user that that had the thread about it. But there's this whole thread about how the movie might have gotten through. Chinese censorship laws with that joke because like it should not have gotten through like like that's just the main thing it sh- it should not have have gotten through and I mean do we know if that joke's still in the American v- v- version has anyone even no. fucking yes, seen this is. movie like no one goes to the movie theater because they're not stupid we're in the middle of a pandemic why would I watch a Paul W S <laughs> Anderson movie <laughs> it's just it's it's just a strange. I have no love for Monster Hunter. I, I have love for Resident Evil. That's why I like put up it's with strange. The it's just basically strange how that joke was able to get through. Like there is some weird. Well, it's because they well, changed no, it. Like when when it was in theaters with that joke. Because it was in theaters with that joke, for like one or two. I days. don't believe. I don't believe it that's was. the case. Like there is legitimate like. There is, um, what's the word? There is bootleg of footage of people like taping the film in the theater with that joke still, still in it. So, okay, I'll have to relook at yeah. the sources, but according to had at least at the time that I wrote this, yeah, uh, it got through the for version like in a China. Hmm. My so, favorite, okay. uh, we'll have to look that over another Anderson time. Fucking fact is that a stunt woman got lost her arm and got mangled, and it was largely his fault and the fault of a producer if i remember correctly because they were like pushing for stunts or whatever that some, mm-hmm. something got that got was not should not have happened i don't remember all the details off the top of my head but i've looked it up like four different times um just just google search kids at home i mean google search uh paul w paul w s anderson right or is that the yes. good one yeah, no, paul w s anderson's the yeah the paul w s anderson is the bad one yeah, so Paul w, Google Paul W.S. Anderson um, accident allegation or whatever because it's a whole thing. And she won like a like a, a massive lawsuit. And I think someone else may have died at some point or I may just be thinking yeah. of Deadpool 2 again. Someone, uh, someone died for the last Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... It's again. Who the fuck has seen that movie? Because again, all, I almost have, all of our movie theaters were closed. Mm. No, no, I mean like a monster hunter who has seen it because almost all of our movie theaters are are closed, so there's no what's way for us to. What's a motion picture? Yeah, right. Like, what's the movie? Is, are, are, those those dic- are those those discs that I put in my PS PS4? Yes. To distract. Paul me? was oh, okay. stupid, Anderson. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, World of Warcraft had recently achieved the title of being the fastest selling PC game of all time of. Uh, selling more than 3.7 million units on its first day of release. Um, I'd originally wrote in this uh, a couple of weeks ago Cyberpunk because beat <laughs> Cyberpunk beat it immediately. Yep, it immediately. So, Shadowlands had two weeks. It had does that two. factor in review funds? Oh, what? Hello? You, if we, that is not accounted for in the sources I have. But um, So then you're probably still right, Jose. Probably. As always. <laughs> Sir, um, anyway, yeah, it was um, it was it was nice to have two weeks. That's it. it was really? nice to have two weeks. It, two weeks to hold that record before just immediately yeah, being trounced, de- demolished. Uh, Cyberpunk, for reference, made uh, four point seven million sales day one. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one thing that this tells us, and that I can shove into people's faces, is that WoW is not dead. <laughs> World of Warcraft is hella not dead. <laughs> Like right, and the last, 
All right, so I think that's going to go ahead and do it for news today. So, T-Man, I'm going to go ahead and let, let you go. It was like four weeks of news that was just in the backlog, and I respect you for getting through all of it, Jose. <laughs> Honestly, there's a lot I didn't put in here because it's just been too much time, and then there's others in the document I still decided to skip. <laughs> Improvising. It's a it's a good trait to have on a resume. <laughs> Uh, T man, what, what what have you been playing? I know I know you've at least booted up um, Wolfenstein: The New Order, and, and Hell uh, yeah. you know for for completely unrelated Nazi reasons going on in our country at the moment. <laughs> Absolutely, it was completely unrelated to the fact that uh, this week happened, and then I saw it was on sale and decided to just get the whole collection because I've been meaning Hell to get yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Felt like shooting some Nazis for. Completely unrelated reasons, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I started playing it uh, yesterday. Uh, I haven't gotten very far into it yet. I finished like the prologue section and I've started like getting into the actual meat of the game. Uh, but uh, did you save Wyatt or Fergus? This is a very important question about our about our friendship. It's very uh, important to uh, me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> uh oh. I, I don't know. Did I choose? Um, I, I ended up choosing Fergus. Yes. Um, wait, Fergus right to answer. die or Fergus to live? Most people choose Fergus, Fergus. to live. Fergus, Fergus is the right Fergus. answer. Okay, Fergus Wyatt, is the right answer. For the record, yeah. the first time. I chose, yeah, my friend, my friend told me to pick Wyatt. And you I'm know what? I'm very happy with that choice. Fergus, Fergus, Fergus is, the right, is the right choice for one. Why it's the correct choice for two? I don't. Absolutely. I don't know, man. Why it has the better with his, with his uh, arm is great. Why it has would... a lot of character development in two. Fergus just kind of exists in two. Leave, leave, leave him alone. Fergus is good. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fergus T-Man. Is, yeah, go yeah, ahead. How you enjoying your time with it? I, no, I, I had mean, to look at it. Oh, go on, T-Man. No, I, I was just gonna say that. Like, I felt like. I felt like Fergus is going to be mad at me for choosing him because it felt like it's supposed to be like, he's like the older guy and, and why is like the young fresh faced soldier. And you should like sacrifice the old guy, just older guy to save the, the new soldier. But like in my head, I'm like, why it's already freaked out several times. And we're like barely into the game. And I don't, I don't know. Fergus gets it, got his, his shit together. So I, I kind of want to keep him alive it did you know however this goes down so that's, that's what that's what my decision was well it's a hell of a way to rationalize making bad decisions but that's it, okay go go ahead continue <laughs> how, 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 how you liking the game so I really like it but the game made the ter- terrible decision of giving me stealth options oh no because oh, i whenever i've <laughs> whenever i've given stealth as an option instead of just going in and blasting everybody i choose stealth on reflex like it's how i played ghost of tsushima uh and so instead of like going around gunning everyone down i'm like sneaking around corners and stabbing people in the back and everything and i was expecting to go in and just have like a shooter like doom or something where i'm just all kinds of crazy combat Every level I think, has like three paths and I adore mm-hmm. I think you're playing it absolutely correctly. Like even if you happen to break stealth, you just go guns a blazing. Um, that's far less applicable in two. There's not really you can yes. stealth a little bit, but the level design doesn't account for it. Not until like maybe the end of the game when you get like upgrades and shit, can you really do stealth effects? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I, th- I think you're going to wind up enjoying it. It's a, it's a hell of a game. The one thing I will say about you playing through yeah, this I'm, I'm, I'm... series is don't don't ignore Yun, Yun Blood. Too many people seem to have done that. Just oh, no, no, no. You can you can absolutely game. ignore Young Blood. No, it's I. I it is the antithesis of what is great about those games. Yeah, it is. It is the. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is killing Nazis as like teenage teenage girls. Two best strengths <laughs> of the Wolfenstein <laughs> franchise, at least the rebooted franchise: uh, strong, well-paced narrative, fucking excellent cutscenes. It's just so tightly paced, back to back to back. The the like, the, the, the gunplay. You have super crazy powerful weapons. And everyone dies in like in a mere second. You know what? You know what? Young Blood is a complete fucking opposite on both those fronts. 
It is anyway, T Man, go ahead. <laughs> y- Youngblood is the 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 expansion to the second one, right? No, it's a standalone. Uh, Youngblood is, standalone, is yeah. a standalone sequel to uh, mm-hmm. uh, to the is new Old Blood also standalone. Uh, yes, kind of? but in the same in the same sense, it is a prequel to New Order that plays narratively a lot like more like the classic Wolfenstein games. It's hokey, supernatural. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, kind of, it's, yeah, it's yeah, kind it's got, of like, a, in it and stuff. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. light canon. Mm-hmm. Don't, it's not canon, like fully. Don't, well, they they never bring up the zombie shit and the weird supernatural uh, shit again. Well, no, but like no, it, it lines up. it lines up like to be canonical. Like I think I won't I won't spoil anything, but yeah. Well, also, want to say don't feel the need to do. The uh, wolf, the old Wolfenstein uh, segments. Yeah. Oh, wait, those, those are just uh, Easter eggs. Those are interesting. Those are cute. Them. That's it's cute the first time you do it, and then it's like I shouldn't have done this ever again. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> la- last hint for me. Um, and when you play two, you, did you said you already bought two? Yeah, I bought like the entire collection, so I have everything. Okay, I I would have recommended to play two on PC because um, that game is incredibly fucking unbalanced and hard as shit with a controller. So even when you're going to play it on PS on uh, PS4, PS5, um, just just do yourself a favor, play it on easy. Don't don't yeah, worry yeah. that it's don't worry it's giving you the fucking baby icon and being a shithead about that. Yeah, because it, that game is not it, balanced. The way damage right? works in that game is so broken that it's mm-hmm. like yeah, it's, it's borderline unplayable. On yeah, the, you guys were talking and, about not playing self. Was I had to play self. I was playing on normal. <laughs> well, that's that's really the only bad thing about two in my mind because I have a peeve of when games have an easy difficulty but then you play it and it's not fucking easy that's my only mm-hmm. thing about two is that it's not an easy game no matter if you're playing on easy or not which sucks because it's it's just fucking so good and the story is really good and the gameplay is a lot of fun and the set pieces are nuts and there's just too many times where i had to just pause the game and be like what the fuck is happening because they fucking went balls to the wall like they were just like oh do we want to do this do it want to do this do it like how about this yeah that's nuts do it like it's just it's one of those games where if you can push past the difficulty and push past the unbalanced gameplay aspect of it you're not going to regret your time with it whatsoever mm. just so gotta what, push through the bad stuff <laughs> so what else have you been up to <laughs> to you man any other nazi related shooters um, or <laughs> no well so the big thing i played sort of over december was yakuza like a dragon uh oh, yeah. and it's <laughs> you are it a beautiful so boy aren't you <laughs> i guess i just have great taste i, I don't know what to say um <laughs> but like it was look, yakuza like a dragon was such a good game that i got like post yakuza withdrawal and i d- didn't want to i couldn't figure out what i wanted to play afterwards and so i've sort of picked up wolfenstein um but i've also been playing a lot of like you know random sort of not story-based games like i've been playing a lot of slay the spire uh doing things like spelunky 2 fall guys uh all those sorts of like you know things i can put like 30 minutes into here and just have fun and then you know set it down and do something else because like i have like basically i have 13 sentinels sitting next to my ps4 right now as the next big game I'm going to play, that's going to take me a while to get through. Uh, but I, I wasn't motivated to start another really heavy story game right after um, Yakuza. I think it's good to pace yourself out like that. I, I I don't like playing two games of the same genre or like same kind of mm-hmm. like even strength back to, back to you back to back to one another. Yeah, I I also I. I've started Yakuza zero like three times and keep falling off of it because I'm not a big brawler person, but I think after the strength of Yakuza, like a dragon, I'm going to actually go back to it and really try and go through because the story is so good. And I am, from what I understand, all the Yakuza games are like that and it should, I, mm-hmm. I'll, 
I, I think you'd be doing yourself like the gameplay. Yeah, I think you'd be doing yourself a favor to just um just put the difficulty on easy and just breeze through mm-hmm. it because I don't think the combat in that series is the draw and it might even to it to some degree it's even a detriment to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bounced off Kwame because I just, just they just they just take too much. Take too many hits. Let's see, Corey, should we should we go ahead and have our little powwow about what we've been up to? Sure. Um do you want to start or should I? Uh by all means, Corey, go ahead. Okay. Um, okay, so what have I been playing? Um so on stream, I have actually been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying uh Spirit Fairer right now. Um, which is the most precious game uh, I have played in a while. Like, there's just so much about the art direction and the story and everything that's just so lovable. It literally feels like they sort of mashed, uh, how do I say this? They sort of mashed like Steven Universe and like a Studio Ghibli film and put them together. Like, it's 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 a really fun, really amazing game. Um, secondly, uh, I am surprised that. Every single one of you in this chat that has PlayStation Plus that hasn't even touched Man Eater yet. I have because, downloaded it. Because Man Eater, let me tell you, Jose, Man Eater. Oh, I'm I, speci- you already told me about this. Let, no, no, no. This is an update, <laughs> I don't have a my PS5. Friend. I'm immune from this criticism. This is true. Right? Same. Let me, let me do forgetting. that now, actually. Thank you for reminding me. Shush for a second. Everyone, shush. Because I it I played that game, and it is the only game where you're literally a shark, and it's an RPG. I platinumed, Did you mean a I platinumed that shit yesterday. Sharpie. Didn't I you like just download it the other day? Three days ago, Jose. I platinumed that shit. Damn, I didn't know. You, I didn't know you felt so strongly about. About sharks about and eating sharks. people. Apparently, apparently that game spoke to me, but I loved every second of it because it's just so much fun. I'm not one for you like, know, I have not a, one. I have it downloaded. I want to play it, but I'm in the middle of Mafia and I'm just like, I, I can't justify playing more than one game on, on that console at a time. My mm-hmm. only, my only gripe, my only gripe about the game is that there weren't more fish species. I feel like there should have been a lot. Like, there are a lot of fish species in the game, but, like, there could have been more. Seven, like, 7.5, not well, enough I, fish. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well, there are plenty of fish in the sea, Corey. There, okay, ha, 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 ha. Okay, jokes aside. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're interrupting my rant. <laughs> um... No, but like there weren't. I was. I'm like looking at Sarah's shirt right now, and I'm like, there weren't any crustaceans in the game. What? I, then I yeah, can't there's... download it, Corey. What the hell? <laughs> there's no there's... crustaceans. There's no me. I'm sorry. It's not crustacean Whoa. eater. It's man eater. Are you it's true? Are you at least having a whale of a time? There are whales in it. There are whales in it. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, it is it is a really, really fun game that you literally just like you start out as a pup of a shark and you, you start just, up as a baby shark? As a baby shark, and then <gasps> you have to awesome. you have to gain your levels oh in order God. to level up your form. And I think it goes it goes like level goes, up your form. <laughs> yeah, no, because you can get different because so you're not just a shark, you're like a, a like a biogenetically enhanced shark or something. Um, by, (laughs) by nature standards, because there's so much, because there's the way that they rationalize it is there's so much pollution in, uh, the waters and like the ocean and shit that, uh, this shark is just genetically enhanced from all the garbage that's laying around. Um, and can you, can you name your shark? (laughs) My, can I, like I gave, did I gave? No, you can't. Oh, oh, no, you can't name your shark. Uh, I wanted in, a zero out of You are your shark. You are I wanted your shark. In, you are I wanted your shark. Yeah. I wanted to name yeah. mine Mark Cuban. Um, but so you start off as, as a pup, and then you go to a teen, adult, elder. Oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mason. <laughs> I saw a teen man shaking his head, too. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to dignify it with a comment. <laughs> um, and then you, you pretty much, at one point, you become a mega shark. 
Um, which by that point you're freaking just massive. And there's all these different types of like tails, fins, uh, bodies and heads and teeth that you can collect by doing missions, um, to give you different abilities and different powers as the shark. So nice. And I will say this much. One last thing about the game is that, uh, it is hilarious hearing people screaming at the top of their lungs as an enormous shark jettisons out of the water onto the beach and just starts munching on them. And you hear one of them cry, I should have never come to the beach. And I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't have. (laughs) No, bitch. (laughs) You are a cruel person, Corey. Uh, You know, when they said eat the rich, I'm pretty sure this is what they meant. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know what, Corey, you're you're good at uh, eating people mm-hmm. on the beach. You're also good at getting uh, my little That's hope characters Shinkan. killed. Jesus your Christ, what, Sarah. your what characters killed? Uh, ignoring what Sarah said. Uh, oh. Shit, what did I say? You're, you're I very. Would... You're good at killing innocents uh, in, in your little shark game. You're also good at killing my little hope characters. First Aren't of all, you? that was a that was a group effort, my friend. So you're just as guilty as I am. For uh, for those that don't know, uh, me and Corey had been streaming uh, Little Hope. It's the same developers that made uh, Man of Dawn, same developers that made Until Dawn. Um, and I just had a hell of a time streaming it because you know horror games or horror movies, horror games are just completely straight up my alley. And uh, playing it with Corey was especially a a blast. Just making p- bad puns together, left and right. Trying to... We actually solved... I, I don't want to say the puzzle. Like we, we figured the plot out pretty damn early on and like some of the parallels they were doing. I and, think we were pretty... But, I mean, I think we were in the right direction. But I think that we were... By the end of it, we were far off. Yeah. For, we, for those we that... Were, totally in like left field like <laughs> like i feel like until until dawn was that same thing where you could easily guess going in like what the pot's gonna be and then like the last hour happens and you're like oh i didn't think they were gonna uh, go down that direction with, without spoiling <laughs> at, there's a certain point at least like halfway through until dawn where you know exactly what's going on um this pulls See, a similar I- curveball as man of madon which me and Corey were not particularly fans of i never I played like, it i guess the twist of man of madon within like minutes of starting that game i just talked over sarah sorry <laughs> no 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 i know it's fine i was just gonna say i heard it wasn't i really love until dawn like i love until dawn i had gone for hours yeah. about that game but when i heard that man of madon wasn't that good i just never touched it because again, it's I feel not... like when, when you when you make something as kick ass as like until until dawn, it's kind of hard to beat that. Yeah. Well, for what it's worth, and I, I was just like I don't know. Like I liked I liked the concept because I guess the concept is like it's this dude like pulling out books and stuff, and is like, oh, let me tell the, you this. The anthological tale. aspect of it is brilliant. The, yeah, yeah, the like I like that, so and, it, and it's what's his name? Uh, oh, what's that actor's Fuck. name? He's in like everything. I forget his name. But he's but he's like creepy and like he's in like everything. Is it it's the like same whatever. as the? Uh, is it the same as the therapist? As the the, no, it's in... not. Oh, okay. No, 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 it's not Peter Stormare. Yeah, no, okay. uh, I wish it was Peter Stormare. Peter Stormare. <laughs> uh, but, like I like how the games are set up, and I feel like it is leading into them connecting everything, which I'm down for. It's just as soon as I heard it wasn't as good as until until dawn with the storytelling chops with that team, I just never touched it. For yeah. what? Was, for like, what oh, it's worth. For what it's worth, uh, I think Corey shares the same sentiment. Um, Little Hope is infinitely better than Madame Madon. It, so, it's, it's not. I'm sorry, so go the, ahead, Corey. Yeah, so the gameplay, I, I will say this the gameplay and the story and everything for Little Hope is, I, in my opinion, it's faster and it's, it's, a, it, you know, vastly more interesting than Madame Madon. I feel like Madame Madon is like really slow to like pick up the pace and, and, and things like that. The, uh, one thing I will say in comparison is that Man of Madon definitely has a lot more like physical, uh, what's the word I used? Hazards has a lot more physical hazards of, of your character possibly getting hurt or, or dying um, because you're on an old tanker. Whereas little hope, there aren't very many hazards. Like there's a few, but there's not as many. Is it more yeah. reliance There's on a choices couple of... and having like effects later? 
Yes, it's a, it's a yes. lot more to do with like how your choices affect you way okay. later in the game. Because that's what I was really into with until un, until dawn yeah. was like I went into it completely blind. I didn't look up anything. I just got really lucky and was able to save everybody, but like one one person, which still haunts me to this to this mm-hmm. to this day. Well, that's but, why um, without go the first time without going into the details, um, it, it's. Uh, I don't think it's a it's a spoiler to say that this revolves around the concept of like ghosts okay. and whatnot. So it's like th- this whole story angle and like the fact that there's a bit more of a mystery compared to Man of Madon like definitely had me more invested. And like and uh, apparently this is the same for Man of Madon. Um, so so me and Corey we weren't just playing this like in a stream together. We we were playing together. You can play this entirely co-op okay. with each with each person taking control of like a completely different group of characters. So like you can get segmented from one another. So I'm talking Corey just like, "Oh yeah, what section are you in that I t- I have I can't see you. I don't know oh, what's going so, on." Like, so we're just like reading notes and sharing what the other person's doing. Yeah. Yeah, you, you Yeah, so we're like piecing together the story from like notes and environmental details and whatnot. And that was that really added to the experience for yeah, me. Yeah, I feel like, like they I, really nailed the co-op in Little Hope. Um and I feel like they were like kind of refining that in Man of Madon and didn't quite get everything together in that one. But I feel like li- in Little Hope they've really put it all together in this sort of like experience where you're playing different aspects of what's going on there was a lot in man of madon that was really confusing like at one point when i was playing the first time we had somebody die and we didn't even know they were dead until the end of the game we were oh that's oh wow oh that's yeah that is weird yeah it was just Mm. really confusing but little hope is like a slow burn where you know what's going on from basically the very beginning and like the plot is driving you forward and it just starts ramping up and ramping up and it really draws you in and you're never confused or not understanding what's going on at least in my experience right i have a i have a comment that i guess that leads into a question because i and also i can explain something for sarah so like uh, everyone's talked about like you know the the issue that like oh the co-op's really fun but the game man of madame was kind of weirdly put together um to elaborate on that I played the game single player and I learned later how the way that these the the dark anthology works is they are designed for co-op it seems within mind like okay so it's not so, well cuz like you could kind of argue sorry you you can kind of argue that until dawn was was made for that yes that but kind not of in the same way co-op where you just hand the controller over well that's the thing that's the whole thing is that okay. man of madon and I'm assuming by association little hope but i haven't played it yet um not just pass the controller around they actually it's the opposite of that they you are you know how like in until dawn you'd go to a character and you'd say something and then they would react according to your reactions yes in this anthology series that's not the case anymore you pick an answer and the other character you're talking to is controlled by your co-op partner and they pick an answer based and you go back and forth mm-hmm. on your okay. own consoles. So you're ba- you're literally oh, you're literally having a conversation. Or, yes, and you're yeah. literally working for okay. against each other. It's just you'll have and not like literally like I say something, I choose something and then you respond to that something. It's like well the for game what? will set up a conversation, you pick option A. The sentence happens, then the other player picks an option. Sentence happens. Another for what it's option. worth, I I don't. For what's worth, I don't recall there being like maybe more than one instance where me and Corey's characters were interacting with each other and like we were both doing dialogue options. It was more so because you're not even consistently control like the same character. Like I can be trolling character A for one section, but then he goes over to Corey and then I get like character C oh, or something yeah. like that. I thought you so always had certain characters essentially. No. So in Little Hope, and I that's actually another thing is that in Little Hope, when you're playing as co-op, it's constantly shuffling the characters between the two players. So uh, both players get a chance to mold these characters' reactions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I will say one one little, I guess, presentation uh, thing that that's pro- probably not great is uh, when when your co-op partner is picking an answer. You know, it has a little <laughs> countdown timer or ring, so like so they can like think about the options they can read. It's like, oh, what do I really want to do? But when you're on the receiving end of it. The other characters just staring in a space, like, 
<laughs> and you're like, uh, I just asked you a simple question. They're just standing there, it's like, so funny. Okay, it's so funny. <laughs> sorry, I just have one more question. Like I said, I was a big fan of like until until dawn, and I'm just gonna spoil the twist of until. Has everyone here played? Until no, 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 no. I think everyone okay. should play that. Don't do just, that. Don't do that. Spoiler free. Does it have a twist the same way as until until dawn does? Because you guys might have said that you could see I, it. I, I, does, I did but not, not see. Very good. I I did. I, not see until dawn's twist coming and that's what makes the game so memorable to me because i flipped out like i was like i'll tell you this much i'll tell you this much the the plot twist of until dawn was good uh Uh, i i'm very annoyed they did they pulled the same kind of twist and little hope as they did with madame and dawn exactly oh really yeah (sighs) i mean it's not it's it's not exactly the same same. it's not exactly i'm not a po I'm not opposed to it, but the fact they would do it like two times in a row, like this, not, not exactly, but if you're it's the thinking, same. And I don't know anything idea. that you're saying that this is just my own thoughts here. If it's meant to be an anthology series and there's meant to be something that connects all of these. If it's what, if they're saying together, what I think they are, that's not a connecting thread. That's just really lazy writing. Done oh, twice. okay. Um, how do I put this without spoiling it? it it's one of those things that is a legitimate subversion of tropes and what you ex- and expectations. Okay, I think problem, I already kind of know what it is. Well, the problem is that if you do this kind of thing twice, it it loses it's not, like, it loses it's all not, effect. It's not and impactful. Even doing it anymore. once is like very lazy. Yeah. I wow. I think if they're gonna do it once it would have been better off in little hope and then had a different ending to man. Of yeah, I, I agree. I think little hope is done better than man of Madon, but it's also not exactly the same twist. There, there's a little bit of a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I was, uh, Corey, since, since you're the, the I was going to say Corey? real quick, um, just for a quick news on the series, um, the dark pictures house of ashes comes out this year. Oh yeah, and there's a funny little tidbit. Yeah, does it, does it um, there, there's uh, the, there's the next one at the end? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. Um, sure, I hope. There, there's uh, there's there's cards you pick up within the game. They give you like visions, like what's gonna happen to characters later on in the, the game. game. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. There, there's one at the very end. We're just like, wait, who's this character? Who this wait, person? who? Yeah. Mm. So the trailer, so the trailer neat. for House of Ashes is out. Um, it's vastly different than either of the games we've played so far and I'm, I'm actually kind of excited for it i'm really hopeful for it no pun intended um <laughs> I, yeah i'm going i'm going to go into house of ashes being like they're not going to do it three times right i hope i not. really, I hope, really not. hope not is, is there I, yellow fart gas that's all i need if, to know but if they do if they do do it three <laughs> times yellow if fart gas t-man if they do end up doing it three times then i i have a theory about that like basically sort of like kind of what you could subtitle this trilogy as they were subverted you know? expectations yeah okay, so, I'm, so i'm just watching the trailer for house of ash and you're right this is totally fucking completely different yeah exactly i'm like <laughs> oh my god giving, it was giving me freaking um What's that movie where they freaking oh, go the descent. the descent? The descent. It was giving me the descent vibes. Oh no! Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> this is one hundred percent like uh... descent. I'm just watching the trailer. Thankfully, the, the trailer has like subs on it. And it, this, this one, I'm kind. I, I'm legitimately interested in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> this one, Corey, since uh, I'll play co-op with since you. You're the one that it. played it with me. Um, what, what are your closing thoughts on it? Sorry, say it again. Oh, since just since you're the one that co-opted it with me, uh, what what are your closing thoughts on Little Hope? Overall? Um, my closing thoughts are: um, it was a fun ride, um, but overall, it is a story that has been told multiple times and a, a result that has been done uh, before. And um, it's you know, it, it's not necessarily completely original, but it still was a very fun fun time and it, it, it implemented co-op uh, capabilities very well. I think I'm basically going to echo that. I enjoyed every second of it, more so specifically because of the co-op. Um, I don't think I was 
as off put by the ending as you were, but more so that the same trope was used yeah. twice. I mean, I it's, will say that no, you guys I, I, have me interested. Yeah. Like after I think everyone talk. Yeah. I think if you like horror movies, if you like horror games, you should Which absolutely and play it, like especially said, in co-op. I will say it again. I loved Until Dawn with all with all of my heart and soul. Like it is it is one of my favorite PlayStation exclusives ever. And I like seeing just the trailer for House of Ashes, I'm legitimately interested. Like that's like mm-hmm. my shit. Wait, isn't Until uh, Dawn on PC? I do want to say one I do want to say one more thing. Um so this isn't really a spoiler, but like when the game is like in the last scene essentially with the curator um and he's talking to the audience and everything is said and done um he says um i'll you know i'll see you again uh perhaps one more time and so i'm thinking that the creators are saying this is a trilogy yeah. like this I is didn't not this... Cut you off, sorry. no 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 I, that's fine uh, Blaine's correct. This is I, I. This is basically them saying this is going to be a trilogy. This is the end of the Dark Pictures anthology. We're going to move on to something else after this. Please so, be Until Dawn two, please, or something uh, like that. This something was essentially like, Until Dawn two, so that's why I'm like, mm, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah, I mean, I really to the hope same not degree. because the way that Until Dawn ends, it can go in so many different directions. If I mean, if, I also can... th- there's one well, part no, of that ending, it, the best ending, I don't like. <laughs> That I can't say because of spoilers. It's kind of racist, is all I'll say. I think uh, just to move or on. Insensitive. Right now, it's so not racist. It's insensitive. Stuff. What is? I mean, yeah, that's also a good point. <laughs> what is this? I uh, right, just to move on, yeah. especially since I'm sore from Corey getting two of my characters killed. I'm gonna hurt um, you. <laughs> um, I do you mind? I uh, I'll just. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to ask, do you mind if I go next only because I might actually have to leave in the next like half hour? So I didn't realize what time. It oh, was. yeah, go ahead. Um, just real quick. If you do have to leave, uh, do don't leave the call. Just mute yourself. Mm-hmm, no problem. Yeah, we will we'll kick you okay. when we're done. OK, or yeah, or just or just like <laughs> message me because then I might call my boyfriend later on Discord. So I'll while I'm in the call, I'll just know that I can't do that. Um, All right. What was I going to say? Um. I completely froze. Games, video games, and how to play them. Um, so welcome, sh- welcome to my uh, TED TED talk. Welcome video to my video gaming podcast where I play games and I talk about them. Um, I'm just trying to think back to the last time I was on here. So I played a, a, a decent amount of things. Um, I've been playing for the last few days uh, a lot of Donkey Kong Country Three, just because. <laughs> I got in the mood and I watched. I was rewatching a, a Let's Play that I hadn't watched in a while. And I was like, "Damn, I need to play this because it's on Super Nintendo on Switch anyway." Um, I want to get started in Final Fantasy twelve and ten and ten two because I just got those on Switch on sale as a gift for myself. But I am holding back because I can't let myself do that until I just fucking commit and beat Final Fantasy eight. Um, which I have that on Switch as well, and it's just sitting there like halfway down. And so today, before the podcast started, I went, man, I need to, I need to, I got a game recently from a very good friend for Christmas, and I played the first level of Astral Chain. What'd you think? What'd you think? What'd you think? Nice, what'd you think? That is a really nice looking game. It is a fun game. My only complaint is I don't know how I feel about how like pro place it is. Yeah, very, it, it's oh, very. It's, it's the it's concept. So much. I know. No, it's literally the concept. Because <laughs> at first I was like, "Is this just going to be like I just happen to play as a cop?" And then it's all of a sudden it's like, "Oh no, no!" It's like you're in a cop organization, and monsters are coming in from another. Monsters are coming in from another reality, and you have to control them to like fight back. And all, and I was sitting there thinking, like, I watched the first episode of an anime called Gate. It is for those who don't yeah, and know. It, yeah, it is, I I know I know. Get it, it. Well, yeah, but for those who don't know, it's a very, very like. At first, you're like, oh, this is just your typical like reverse isekai turning into an isekai. Uh, 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 fantasy people attack Japan and easily fail because they, this police show up and the military shows up and they take care of them. The defense force. But then they go through the gate and start like basically trying to take pieces of the thing. And I was like. I watched one episode of this. This feels like pro-imperialist propaganda. I don't want to watch this anymore. 
And that's kind of the feeling I get playing the first level of Astral Now Chain. I feel really bad. No, no, don't, because I, I don't know if it's going that way yet. I just get a very it, weird feeling from the intro being, oh, we brought this creature from the other dimension, and now we're going to control it. And I'm just like, oh, okay. I, just, yeah. I don't know about that. I, just knew, I, I feel really bad because I just knew that you're a big planet person, and I play no, Astral no, 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 Chain. No. Let me be clear. The over, game is fun. And it over, hasn't ruined like, that for me yet. A week. Like, I played it over a week on vacation. Like, like I was on this nice cruise. I was, like, sitting in the sun. And I had my fucking Switch like this. Mm -hmm. Just like, I have it on my TV. It looks gorgeous. Because I was so into like, it. Like, 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 I need to stress, this game is might be the best looking game I've played on Switch yet. Aside oh, from maybe, oh, yeah. Like, it is. Also, it to like me, it has, it has one of the best Platinum soundtracks ever. Mm -hmm. Like, just even I, the... Just the theme kicks so much ass. Like the way I love the fact. I mean, number one, something I miss on games from like the god generations ago is I miss the 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 trope or habit of the game actually starts when you put the card or disc in or whatever. Not with, like you don't go to a menu and hit start and everything else. The game just starts and then you get to a yeah. menu later, like Shadows of the Damned, or in other cases like where the game just goes. And then once you quit and come back, then you'll have like a load game menu or what have you. I dig mm -hmm. that about this, that it just goes. Um, I think it's, it is, like I said, one of the most gorgeous games I've seen for the Switch. Um, it is easy to pick up. I have a feeling it's going to be one of those, like, anybody can play it and get through it. But, like, when you learn the mechanics, you can do some crazy shit with it. You're 100% like, correct. Like, I'm just going to say, say now it's... But, like, in a way that, like, you have an AI-controlled friend that you're giving basic commands and have some skills. I'm waiting to figure that out. And, like, because at first I was like, is this just going to be a character action game? And it's really not. It kind of is. But it's just, it's one button to attack and not do combos, just to mash attack. And you can either shoot or you can use your little baton thing or whatever. And then your, 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 I'm just going to call it a Pokemon. Your, your, your interdimensional Pokemon is just like, okay, I'm in here now and I'm going to beat the living shit out of everything around you according to, like, where you are. Uh, and I dig it. I do dig it. My issues with the uh, sub, the, the narrative so far aside. I just I just feel kind mm -hmm. of bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, bad. I told you I was looking hey, forward to it, so that's not your fault. Hey, if we have to throw out all cop media, that includes Power Rangers SPD, so I'm not sure no, if literally. I... No, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> and at least this game is, like, in... It seems to be... I don't know if it's Earth or not, but it seems to be, like, a very, very far removed from reality situation, so I'm, like... Not that I like, oh, I'll give it a pass, but like it at least isn't like I'm actually playing in like the Japanese self defense force or whatever. That would just be like mm -hmm. the only thing that I'll say about it story wise is it's going to go in directions you weren't ex expecting. That's one of my favorite things about it is because when you get a platinum game, you're oh, th this was before near, this is before like near Automata. When you were getting a platinum game, you kind of knew what, what you were getting. Because Platinum yeah. is all about character action games, no matter what franchise they were working with. But Nier was this shift. Nier was this Platinum game shift where after Nier came out, you have no idea what to expect from them any anymore. Mm -hmm. And if I remember, I believe Astral Chain was the post-Nier Platinum. Mm -hmm. And let me tell that you... That sounds about right. Uh, yeah, it was. Which I don't think that... Which, like, what I believe you're expecting is totally not what this game is going to give like yeah. and that's like, another thing and not getting into spoilers but like i i'm down with starting a situation like that if then they do because like right now i'm already kind of expecting like oh is it going to be one of those you start off as like a cop but then you start noticing there are problems with this organization because literally the game open and this isn't even a spoiler game opens up to a dude who i couldn't could not think more is more evil just being like yeah capture that fucking <laughs> So I'm just like, I don't, I, that's why I'm still like, I'm willing to see where it goes. I'm just not really happy. It's mostly the, the, the aesthetic, the cop aesthetic. That's what's like bugging me. And I, and if, as long as it's like, if it's surface level, I can kind of get past it. Cause I mean, wonderful 101 is also very like authority is good kind of thing, but they also have the superhero aspect. So it doesn't mm -hmm. come into my mind as much. And I actually yeah. really want to fucking buy that and play it. I have a Wii U copy, but I can't play it. But no, yeah, I'll just I'll, I'll just say this is post near platinum. So 
because I I remember a lot of the end end game story. A lot of the middle game story is kind of blurry because once again I was drinking a lot mm. on that vac- vacation, <laughs> so I don't <laughs> remember. I, don't I just remember the end the end the end game. But I will say by the end game it went in places that I was not expecting. So oh, and, and I noticed yeah, this. Is I noticed what you said about the music. Like, because you told me before I started playing it, like, you couldn't say it without really (laughs) spoiling it, but, like, the music does things to move along, like, narrative pace, and I totally get you, even just playing the first level. What else? the music advances as you do with the story and what you're doing, and it kills me. For 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 all of you guys who, if you have not played Astro Chain, but you've played Nier and you remember the music from a Nier, Nier Automata, the music in Astro Chain... It, you, literally you can't send the music to people when they start playing it because the music spoils what happens in the game because the music has has vocals in it and first of all it's some of the kick-ass fucking anime music i have ever heard oh, just yeah. that opening theme savior so fucking good like it just it's so it, amped playing the intro level it it rocks like, yes! so good. um but yeah you can't send the music to people because the music spoils what happens in the in the game you can't just send people tracks because what the vocals say spoils what happens during that scene. So it's again, it is post near platinum. So it's what they took learning from from near doing with Astral. And it's really fucking good. Like I feel bad that not many people played this. Like more people need to play Astral because it is just the combat's really good. It is really good looking on Switch. The music kicks so much ass. It's just really good, and I'm so glad that you are enjoying it gameplay wise because I knew that it that it would be right up your alley. Oh yeah, with that, and it's just like it is. It also has the biggest main character syndrome in video games ever because oh, yes, you, it does. you 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 have a twin, and you pick which gender right at the beginning. Your your twin doesn't get cus- customized. So if your character has like pink hair and looks like the main character, your twin looks normal as fuck. <laughs> I gave it mine dark purple character. hair and green eyes, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 fun, but I'm so glad that you're in enjoying it. Um. So what else you been up to, Blaine? Uh, I haven't been playing much aside from that. Honestly, it's I, I've been dealing with said li- with life problems and issues, and I've just been trying to fix that. So I haven't really been thinking a lot about like what I'm playing. Or- play but Mm -hmm. um i did i mean like i told you i did get the final fantasy twitch game for 12 and 10 to decided to jump back some uh natural chain um i am going to be doing a stream soon with sarah and like i I, because what she told me i decided i want to play some dark souls too so people will get to see me run through the beginning of that game really fast and show that I've played that game way too much because I've platinumed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I think for time, I will probably skip out on some of the other stuff I've been playing since me and Corey went off about Little Hope for a while. Uh, Mesa, what have you been uh, doing? So for me, I've been pretty much just been doing doing the use. Um, no, no, nothing crazy yet. I uh, upgraded. I got a better uh, capture card recently, so um, I'm hoping yeah. to use that a little bit more. Don't know what I'm gonna use. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my old one yet, but um, uh, so it's whatever. Um, I bought a bunch of games. Actually, you know what? I just I'm, I just sorry, bought like, too many games. Like I don't know why I bought so many games. <laughs> I, I I don't know what compelled me. <laughs> why can't I carry all these games? Or are they, or- were they, were they at least on sale? Most of them. <laughs> what about saying that means no. Mesa? No. <laughs> <laughs> you took a second. You had to think of. It's um, called retail therapy. Exactly. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I'm hoping to burn through ghosts and uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah. To eventually yeah, get to yeah. Someone else is playing that. Um, Immortals and uh, um, uh, The Last of Us 2. Not- oh, you're yeah. finally going to play The Last I'm, of I'm Us. I'm going to play that last because I'm just hoping for a graphical upgrade for PS5. Yeah, That's kind of what I'm holding have, out for they, for my second place. They have, du- they have DualSense support for some reason. 
but not but so not that's a gonna, yeah. apparently so that's so. gonna be the last of the games you play yeah I'm excited to probably be like, oh, it's whatever. I got you, Blaine. <laughs> and move I on. <laughs> I, got, I got you. I got you, Blaine. I, I saw what you're going for, Blaine. I was out. I, I was, was not no, going for it. Nope, I was just watching Jose's through. face and watched him you're right. slowly <laughs> smile bigger and bigger. You're right. I missed it. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, it's all good. It made it funnier. Uh, um, I, f- I forgot to mention, uh, I finally got a new PC. Right. Because um, I... The first PC I had was back in like 2012, 2013, and I've just kind of slowly upgraded that over time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like 2.6K later, I have a hell of a big Chonga sitting right there. It's just uh, uh, complete overkill. We upgraded, we sort of upgraded together, kind of, not really. Yeah. So so instead of playing Among Us at a 1440p at 30 frames per second, now I'm playing Among Us at... 1440p hey. at 30 frames per second. Watching me stab you in the back <laughs> at that quality. But I am too. playing Cyberpunk fully maxed out with uh, ray tracing and whatnot. So it's I tried nice. playing Total Warhammer like a week ago because it was on sale, and I realized that man, my computer doesn't like that game. It ran at like three <laughs> frames a second. <laughs> oh no! On oh, the no. lowest settings, Let's where see. people look like claymation dolls. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I. Th- I think um, the last thing we'll probably go over just because of time restraints and I got to be up at five in the Ooh. morning. Uh, Sarah and I, we have been playing. Uh, yes. Cold well, War. I just only played the you campaign. Go so ahead I and give your thoughts, sir. I, I, I need to play the campaign, too. Uh, I, I have no thoughts about anything else. I will so very, just a heads up. I play COD for the campaigns. I, 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 will, I will very swiftly very over fun. the multiplayer then. Uh, it is it, it is Call of Duty. Ask Call of Duty. It's fun to play. Feels good. Um I think it's a little bit of a shame that Call of Duty mechanically is one of the best controlling shooters on the market, especially with controllers, and yet it's kind of wasted on dickheads running around like f- fucking uh, Adderall ninjas or something. I don't know. Um, I can, but, yeah, can, can so, I just say I've never played a Call of Duty game? Well, well good. That's totally fine. Yeah. 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 Totally no, fine. But, like I, I. Oh, for I, for what it's I, I'm bringing it up because like. When you say it has the best like shooting mechanics, like I know some people say like Destiny Two has type mechanics too, and like what makes Call of Duty's mechanics and everything the best uh, out of other shooters? Um, when it comes to uh, gameplay feel specifically for shooters, it comes down to. Uh, specifically when you're using a controller, it comes down to aim assist. You don't want too much. You don't want too little. Does it have a little bit of snappiness? Mm. Is it too loose? Um, the impact of the of the weapon against the foe, do you see them reacting to it? Does a gun feel powerful? Mm-hmm. The accuracy, the recoil. And uh, I would say specifically for Cold War, it like it, this would objectively play better with a mouse and keyboard. But if you're not playing with a dual sense control, yeah. I think you're really mm-hmm. robbing yourself of Absolutely. the way that it's intended to be played because it it is fucking phenomenal with a dual yeah, sense. Um, um, but but to go back to your question, I guess it's it's more it's hard to pinpoint, especially more so since I'm writing a game design doc on um, uh, Doom Eternal, like why the gameplay loop works and like it's it's Call of Duty is basically the antithesis to Doom, so it's basically. It all comes down to the to the gun feel. It's not so much the movement. It's mm-hmm. not so much the enemies. They're kind of bland, like regular dudes with guns. It's it, yeah. It's mainly a recoil the way the aim assist comes down to. Like I'm playing. Um, I, I won't get into like the rest of my thoughts on it, but I'm playing Mafia right now, and the gunplay in there is complete dog shit. Ooh. Um, so it's gone to the point where I've just I've just jacked up the aim assist like crazy because if the gunplay is not mm-hmm. good, then just let me basically mitigate that part of the experience so I can enjoy the narrative, which is a good part. Um, uh, stiff movement is it is murder for shooters. Uh, relying too much on lock on is, is murder for shooters. Is a reticule just right? Does it have a proper uh, recoil uh, rate of fire? Um, I, I'd, I'd probably have to like make more bullet points and dive into these specifically, but that's basically what kind of finds gun feel that. Call of Duty is basically yeah. nailed ever, I would say, even prior to Modern Warfare over. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to ago. like. And now I now I now I feel old. Uh, <laughs> I just, 
<laughs> oh no, no, it's completely valid. And in a game where you shoot dudes, uh, having good shoot dudes <laughs> gameplay is pretty fucking so important. The story is good. I that's why I'm here because I'm that weirdo that cares about Call of Duty lore. <laughs> I'm that weirdo that will sit in the corner and yell, "They're, they're, they're, they're merging Black Ops and Modern Warfare. It's happening." Um, but yeah, so I played the the camp campaign. I beat it literally in two days. Um, I binged like five hours on a Sunday, made it to the final level, went, wait, what? Like, even after doing, so the, so the great, so the one thing that Treyarch is doing with this Call of Duty, one thing, which is completely spec, spec, speculatory, uh, Woods would, Woods would call me a nerd for saying that word, actually. <laughs> um, uh, I think we would all um, call you nerds for saying that. They're making everything past Black Ops 1 totally not canon anymore. Uh, and two, they're, <laughs> they, yeah, they, they designed this, this story in a way where it's very strange. You have a hub area. You can talk to your teammates. All of your teammates have backstories. It is a... V- I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it a hub area as much yeah, as a hub square. Yeah, I mean, there's like square. two extra squares on it. Like you can, um, you can so yeah. unlock. You can unlock the gate. Yeah, it's uh, not like the Doom Eternal one where it's like you can move like five feet to the right. No, so it's not. But, but it's a square ass yeah. square room. Yeah, but like I said, you can talk to your teammates. You can learn their backs backstories. One of your teammates lies to you three different times about his scar, and I know this because I got two different ones and talked to Jose, and he got a different one too. Or you got one of them. I don't. I don't know. But like, yeah. There's um, three possible things to say. It's crazy because one uh, uh, negative on it because I legitimately love this campaign. I thought I thought it was a lot of fun. You could tell that Treyarch wanted to go super deep. Like, like they wanted, like, so for reference, you can pick your gender in this, in this game, female, male, or classified, <laughs> um, uh, which is then used, they, 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 them pro, uh, pronouns. But so I played a female character, Jose, you said you played, what did you play? Okay. I played, uh, I played non-binary. I, I, I know a friend who played male. Uh, I talked to them about there is legitimate, there is dialogue options. They, characters will speak to you in different uh, w- what's the term? Different uh, different vocal. Like I like I, I, yes, I, I had a character tell me something the same line told to a male character cadence differently since, since I was playing female fee- female i had completely different lines of dialogue options that i could choose to so i could talk to people uh um i had uh yeah just what they were doing with this you could tell that they wanted to do more you could tell that they wanted to push this more and make this like a completely different call call, call of duty camp campaign but you could just see the edges where they just weren't given enough time to push Hence why the campaign's only about like six and a half hours. That includes doing the two side missions, which there is two side missions in this. There is, and you can do these crazy puzzles to like finish the side missions 100%, which I'm seeing, I just saw Mesa smile. The puzzles were so, they were really cool. They are different for everybody. So you can't, can't look up how to solve them. Call of Duty yes, there is. And they're legitimately well-made puzzles too. Like I got stumped for like literally 20 minutes. <laughs> like I was like trying to figure it out. And the thing is they randomize them. So you can't Google how to like find the answer. You can Google how to do the puzzles, but you can't Google how to get your specific answer. Mm. So it's incredibly interesting because you don't have to do the puzzles, but if you do them, you can actually finish the side missions true. Because there's two different endings to the side missions. One if you do the puzzles and, and one if you don't. So like, well, like I said, there is just so much content in this. We could tell that that the people at Treyarch wanted to do something more and they wanted to expand it. But it's very short. It ends very abruptly. There's a good and good ending. I mean, depends on what you call good. There's like a good ending and then there's a completely terrible bad ending. Um, and it's just like, I've never, I think the past, I think the last call call of duty I played that I was so invested in the campaign was 2019's modern warfare and then advanced warfare before that, not counting Kevin, Kevin Spacey in it. Like, yeah, it was fine then. Yeah. Not counting him. I thought it was really good. It's just what, 
Yeah. Now it feels uh, better to just kill him. Cold. It just it makes me so like I wanted more after I beat Cold Cold War. I beat it. I got the really good ending, and I just sat sat back and I was like, I want more of this. Like what they were doing, like the whole eighty spy aesthetic is kind of my jam. So I was like hella into it. Um, especially when they popped out the like giant 80 cell phone for the first time. And I just kind of lost it. I was just like, Oh my God, they're like going like full on eighties. Um, the, the, the campaign is mission based. Some of it is. So there's some missions where you do like three missions after one another, then you get sent to the main hub square. We're just going to call it the hub square and you can pick them. And it's, it's hard to describe it because it's again it's not like other call of call of duty campaigns like the main like shell of it is a stereotypical call of duty camp campaign but the inner workings of it is not they're they, they want to do something completely different and i wish that they were given more time to i guess there's a rumor that they had they were not given enough like apparently they wanted to do a lot more but they weren't given enough time and they had to get it out before holiday that was the rumor that happened after the game came came out, which I'm kind of starting to believe after just playing it and just seeing the little threads of stuff that they wanted to do and the little details that they put in into it. But I, I Jose and I have differing opinions on it, but I personally liked what they were doing. And I'm just sad that they couldn't do what they wanted to do. I I think to give my brief thoughts um, in terms of design, it's it's whatever. It's a Call of Duty game. You point a gun at someone, they die in two shots. Um, the the divergencies that I really enjoy in Call of Duty campaigns come from the narrative. They come from and none of the other games have really come down to what Black Ops Two did, which is making very subtle uh, oh, storyline yeah, divergences that. that you're not even necessarily cognizant of. Um, because in, in Black Ops 2, it can be just be like, hey, if you fail to like get to this person in time, this this character actually makes it to a later part of the game. It doesn't give you a fail state. And then See, that has the, ramifications the later say, on. Uh, it's, just, it's not necessarily the like one pick one or about the Black other. Ops 2 was that um, they, they did it in a way where some of the choices were so fucking obtuse. Where it was like, hey, if you hit something That's what I enjoy. speeder, then your partner gets a big scar and he hates you later. It's like, well, how would you? And it doesn't say that. You literally hit something and the cutscene ends and the dude has well, a see, scar that, that, down, his, down his face. And you're like, how? How? Well, that's <laughs> what I enjoy about it. But uh, just to continue my thoughts, at least for Cold War, it's um, the, the, uh, the third pillar of that, I guess, that I enjoy in Call of Duty campaigns. It's... Um, uh, doing levels that aren't necessarily Rudy Tooty Shooty Magooty, where you're, you know you're, mm -hmm. you're sneaking around a um, a Russian base and you're collecting intel. There's like multiple ways you can. Um, that's not really a spoiler, but you're trying to frame someone for something. Yeah, There's yeah, like yeah. That different one options was a you can go down to, like, to accomplish like, this. It was a lot of fun because you could still feel um, the tension in it because it's like, oh god, what do I do? And mm -hmm. then, or you could. I remember there was an option where it's like, hey. There's this person here. He kind of betrayed us. Can you take him out while 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 you're at it too? And taking that person out also unlocks a way for me to to like frame said other person. And it's just the way that that was so like like just happened in this like really nice smooth way. I was like, I I like that. That's good. Yeah, I my uh, I guess my bigger takeaway for it is that obviously the multiplayer. Um, player base for Call of Duty doesn't give which a flying fuck so about bad. the campaign. They're just going to play multiplayer, which I th I think that Call of Duty should cater to the strengths that it doesn't necessarily use and just like go mm -hmm. completely fucking batshit insane with its campaigns. And uh, that's that's I think that's probably why Cold War. I, I, I really don't care for Black Ops 3. That, that went a little bit <laughs> way too you had Christopher uh, removed in from it, everything else. I don't head. give a fuck. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, so like the, like the whole appeal to me of Black Ops 1 and 2 is that 1 was actually a really good story. And then uh, seeing the plot twist in there kind of recontextualizes a lot of stuff. It actually has a lot of character development for... Um, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Victor Reznov, especially, especially since you have that connection from how he was your, I believe, sergeant in World at War. Yeah, he was the um, dude. That so, so he had a lot of character development. There's a good. Russia, just... 
Yeah. And so seeing like his progression and the and what he winds up devolving to what he does to, the, to your main character in Black Ops and everything that happens from there is what defines Black Ops to me. Like the weird shit in Black Ops is that game. And then Black Ops 2 is mainly focused on those subtle divergences and Cold War. I don't want to say it has none of that, but it does it. It's such the 11th hour that it, it's mean, just, it's forced in the story. What would, would literally have not made a I difference mean, whatsoever. The, fucking they, ever. I'm, I'm not going to spoil the twist of cold, cold war, but they do hint at it extremely early on. And if you know, but it's so yeah, inconsequential, but it's like, if you know, CIA history in the like eighties, you're going to fucking catch on what, what it is in a second. Like you're going to like, know what what the twist is but like the way that they handle it and they tease it early on i personally liked because i was like oh man when is it going to happen like when are they going to unravel the whole the whole twist but i but i do uh, agree with you it does happen pretty late and i wish they had done more of like uh i mean the okay quest before they do the twist or like after they do the twist is awesome like there's this really awesome quest right near the end. I, I say quest. There's like a mission right at the end that's really fucking fun and really like where totally you can diverge off the path and it's totally worth it. Um, but I do agree that that they brought it in a little bit later than I would have wanted them to because if they had brought it in earlier, I would have loved to see what what they would have done story wise. For what it's worth, I really enjoyed yeah. that exact mission too because of the uh, yeah the weird like stuff that's, that happens. That's when they don't but just the, the weird just the, black ops. But just the like overall. That's when they go like balls to the wall with weird yeah. black ops stuff. But it, it's just it, it's it's not even so much that it's eleventh hour, but that's definitely like a huge factor of it. It's just more so it's so unimportant to the overall story, where like it it can recontextualize in the sense of. I, I don't want to spoil it, but it doesn't really have anything yeah. of consequence to recontextualize anything. It's more like, oh, like yeah, okay, the, whatever. Uh, about the uh, Black Ops games is how they, and and Modern Warfare 2019, and, the, and I believe Black Ops took this from the original Modern Warfare trilogy, is they make your main characters actual people. Like, it's not like you're playing like a blank slate, like you are in Cold cold war because you can name your character you can pick Mm -hmm. pick their gender pick if they were a part of mi6 or cia or x x kg kg uh kgb um i i just wish they and they kind of hint at characterizing your main character uh their their name is bell no matter what like you can pick their first and last name and what i found really cool is how that name shows up at the bottom of each mission but it like blacks it out like 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 normal call of duties do that was a cool touch but it's just like i wish they would have kept with that black ops staple or with that recent just call of call of duty staple which is characterizing your main character not just throwing you on another blank slate i yeah i would have preferred it to be an actual authored character versus just another um I don't recall if they're completely yes, silent, but for all, they are. For just just for the sake of this argument, I prefer fully authored characters to uh, silent protagonists. And just one other point before we go ahead and wrap things up, um, building off of Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 definitely fulfilled on this promise is that there's long lasting consequences to what the main protagonist of uh, Black Ops 1 went through, Alex Mason, with all the brainwashing. And I know, Sarah, you're going to bring up the little text oh, no, pieces like, of lore, but I was just no. really hoping for something more and substantial to happen. I agree happen with you. By like, having I'm not going to spoil it, but there is a mission where it's brought up, and it's actually contextualized like on screen. Like If you've played Black Ops 1, they will reward you for that. There is a mission that's 100% nudge-nudge towards Black Ops 1 fans. But other than that, that's the and other than like little hints, because there's a computer in main square that you can find that has that has everybody's basically background, and it's brought up in Mason's background. But other than that, it's only brought up in that one mission and that little side thing, and that's it. And if this is meant to like wipe the Black Ops story slate clean and just have this be like Black Ops Two, they're really doing Mason an injustice, especially since they characterize him so well. And not just being like the character that you're playing as, like he has a personality. Him and Woods bro 
like they're like they're like brosif is is wonderful and it's so fucking fun to like see them together and just be and just be bros and it just sucks that they didn't give mason the enough of the story like closure that he needed after the events of black ops one especially because all the shit that happens at the end of black ops um and with like i mentioned earlier with them now connecting the storylines of modern warfare and black ops it just makes me wonder where they're going to go with the modern warfare redo that that they're doing because let's be honest that's going to be the next cod game i would be utterly baffled if it's not or like modern warfare 2 is and it just in, it, it just interests me where they're taking it now if black ops cold war is indeed black ops 2 how is that going to translate to what happens in the next Infinity war one i th- i think they're I think the only important question we need to be asking about in um, in regards to uh, Black Ops canon is uh, is it still canon for Woods to jump out of his wheelchair at the end of Black Ops Two and yes. play guitar solo? And if that's with not canon, Sevenfold? I don't know what is. I didn't know that didn't... was an actual thing, but that's great. Yeah, you. Can, oh, it, you it can is a real thing. A music video in Black Ops Two with Avenged Sevenfold with their zombie song, and Woods hops up out of his wheelchair and starts like shredding it. <laughs> Uh, Jose, I have an opinion. I mean, I, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> just real quick for the opinion. Uh, I, I it is a little bit of impending dread playing uh, Cold War, knowing that uh, within the timeline, if Black Ops Two still can, that Woods is going to get fucking is going to have his knees shot and fuck still, off. I still don't believe but, uh, go it's ahead, boy. Two is canon any any anymore, but but we can argue about that all day. I don't know. Shotgun to the knees is kind of hard to unwrite. I, I I have an opinion. I've been listening to this whole conversation. I mean, and I, most of y'all probably know I don't really like Call of Duty. I yeah. my biggest issue with it is that it is it it, it always it always has been and always will be American military imperialist propaganda. Um, I think that the people who make mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're absolutely the way, right about that. By the way, on the ground level, are genuinely trying to do something, but. The military mm-hmm. uses it to recruit people, et cetera, et cetera. I've mm-hmm. talked about it at length. Listening to this whole conversation about this game has basically made me go, man, I would love to see what like Treyarch could be doing. And even like by association, like Raven could be doing if they weren't making Call of Duty mm-hmm. here. Yeah, like making something else. The one thing I Because I would love to see like a first person shooter with this kind of attempt at nuance, or or if like you said how they weren't they clearly wouldn't give the given the time to do what they wanted to do with this, and so it just kind of became uh, another Call of Duty game, and it was just whatever. Like, what, what I would love to see them be able to do, like their own IP, and do no. something with that nuance to its full potential, and not just no. Like, and it's like, like the seminal release of the game that the military will use to recruit fourteen-year-olds. I totally uh, agree with that. And the last thing I'll say is that there was times I was playing Cold Cold War, especially when it would send me back to the like main like hub area where I could talk talk to people. Where I kind of didn't feel like I was playing a a, a Call of Duty game because you don't get that out of a Call of Duty game. Yeah, like, I, that's what I, I sounded completely... interesting to me. Yeah, like it's like they legitimately characterized these like, people, <laughs> like 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 they weren't nameless foot soldiers that fought with you. They were legitimate people, and they legitimately got backs backstories like and it was crazy to me because you're completely right Blaine I want to see what Treyarch can do if if they're given the the ability to make another game being able to take what they wanted to do in Cold War and put it towards some something else because I feel like I enjoyed this game basically on the merit of my team wasn't just my squad. Like I felt like they were actual people that had actual lives. And mm-hmm. I I was at my most fun when I was talking to them and hearing them talk about other people on the team. Like I'm I don't want to spoil it and I'll kind of dance around this subject, but there is a female MI6 soldier or uh, agent on your team. And I don't know if I was able to do this because I was playing as a female character, but I was able to ask her about your commanding officer. And I was asked, oh, why didn't you talk about his scar? And she brought up, oh, that's the last, you you don't talk to him about that. That's like the last thing you ever bring up with him. And then she went into this tangent where she goes, oh, he's not just about his scar. He's into other more like prominent things. You could tell that she was saying that he sleeps around. He just basically fucks everybody that moves. And 
there was this there was then this this the scene that happened where she kind of let out a, a really annoyed sigh and she went well, uh, Bell, listen to me, woman to woman, I would give him a, a wide berth. And the way that she said it and the way that it was just contextualized was just not something I expected out of a Call of Duty game. And I had and I found it so much fun because I was like, oh, you 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 made the mistake. Can I what? Can I make a request? Find fictional men. Oh, oh, that are not oh, I can do that in like a second. But it's but it's just like going back on topic. The way <laughs> like I didn't feel like I was playing a Call of Duty game at that point. Like the way that they were characterizing people and giving them backstories and giving them like sort of relationships with like with like other members of your of your team was not Call of Duty. And I blame when you said like I want them to do a, to do something else what they wanted to do with this. So do I, because now I want to see that. I want to see them given the time, given the chance to do something different, because if what we saw here was just them like testing the waters or seeing if they could do it, I'm 100% down for it. Oh, Blaine, for what it's worth, you mentioned Raven earlier and uh, to build off of being able to go do their own IP. Yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, Singular Raven made Singularity, ass. one of the See, best uh, shooters of the seventh generation. I've always heard that it's one of those like it's not that it's like the best game ever, but it's just one of the most like they went for something. It was interesting and it's fun and it's great. Even if it's not like, like, you know, it's not a game that's like, Oh, that's the best fucking thing ever. That like, is always heard it be like, it's the one best of those games that people need to, to play. Describe it. Like if you can get a hold of a copy, fucking play it. It is so much fun. I want to. Is Singularity mm-hmm. the one that had that really bad shit ending? Or am I thinking of a different game? I'm not going to spoil it. I, you know what? I think, you know what? I think there are some bad shit endings. I, that might be right. I think you have you thinking of inversion because I had the exact same mental ghosts through my my brain as well. Wait. <laughs> to be yes. fair, Singularity has some bad shit. Turn, I know you can use your time powers to turn a man into a puddle of it's, goo. Yes, you can. Like you reverse age them until they're mm. just fucking putty on the floor. I will. Oh yeah. Also, to uh, to, to what you're saying, Blaine, you're completely correct. Uh, about about you know the recruitment and all that, but I will say that track at least to me always felt the most critical between mm-hmm. the two between oh, Infinity yeah, Ward and the- yeah. yeah. I will say there's that. some there's some things in in, in 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 Call of Duty games. There's like oh they they okayed that <laughs> like they, they left that in now. No one's paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like because I remember yeah. playing Black Ops One and being like <laughs> this is still kind of that xenophobic. Oh, the Russians are out to get you stuff, but. At the mm. same time, yeah, so much the time. of the game is Mason being abused by multiple government mm-hmm. agencies, whether it's I, the U.S., or whether will, it's Russia, or whether it's whoever. I will 100% say about Cold Cold War, there's some stuff in Cold War, and again, if you know 80 CIA history, it's not that hard to guess. There's some stuff that happens in Cold Cold War where, again, I was like, oh, they were allowed to put that in there, or like they were allowed to like talk about that little like... Mm-hmm like that like oh. there is some shit that goes on in cold war well like some of the stuff i've heard about modern warfare 2019 <laughs> well i feel like, like even like yeah the, there's, the, there's some stuff in modern warfare 20 2019 yeah <laughs> there's even i want to say like 95 percent. Oh, that's probably my okay, fault sorry my headphones someone. open back what? Oh, no problem. Uh, there, there's even some stuff in like Modern Warfare 2 where 95% of it is like, yeah, fuck yeah, America, let's go shoot some terrorists, whatever. But then it has some stuff with the antagonist towards the point, like directly saying like, yeah, we're going to trick a bunch of fucking kids into joining the army. Um, that's a little poignant for, her. I mean, like you can't do like do 95% like, fuck yeah, let's do this and then t- try to twist it around. But at least it's, it's one of the not 100% being like, there. Hey, help us, please <laughs> help. help us. <laughs> you know, I mean, we end up I, making a game called Spec Ops the Line. But, uh, mm-hmm. I think that's gonna about do it for tonight. Um T Man, you wanna go ahead and uh, uh give, give a shout yeah, out to all your uh, stuff and whatnot? You can, my my podcast is called Make Me a Gamer. Uh you can find that Twitter, it's at make me a podcast. And my writings are at T Man Writes, and you can find me at T Man Plays Games. 
Thank you. Awesome. You've you've been an amazing guest and you're you always more than having welcome me. back mm -hmm. on here. Thank you for coming. I am very interested in uh in in seeing yeah. you through on your uh Wolfenstein journey and uh, we'll we'll find out exactly what kind of person uh, you are after okay. you play uh, Young Blood. <laughs> Um, really, really quick, I will say, uh, again, <laughs> January 23rd, Blaine and I are very, very lucky and, and honored to be a part of a, of a streaming marathon for the, uh, Trevor, uh, Trevor project. Uh, we are raising money with the SD, SDGC team and we will be a part of the souls block. I will be heading it up at nine at 9am Pacific standard time to 12. I will be playing demons souls i it's, it's gonna be a disaster but come come anyway there's there's me uh playing there's a bunch of other people involved and you can come help us raise our goal of ten thousand dollars which i totally know that we can that we can make i i have the faith in us blaine is there is mm -hmm. there anything you want to add about it uh no sarah pretty much covered it um yeah we're gonna be doing it's it's an all-day thing um i literally i think I want to say either literally till midnight or like just till late at night, like maybe 10 PM, but either way it's, it's an all day thing. Um, if you can donate and be a part of it that way, that's fantastic. If you can, if you can't, and you just want to watch and spread the word, that's fine too. Um, I am really looking forward to it. I've been wanting to uh, do something else related to a charity since the big charity stream I did with some friends of mine. Um, and that being said, I still owe, I still owe a either 24 hour or just cause I, I, I made a promise that if we raised a certain amount of money, I would play pathologic two on stream until I can't play it anymore. Either I beat it or I die so oh. many times that it's unbeatable. Oh, um, <laughs> I am going to probably have to change that to like just some kind of arbitrary time limit as well, but that is not what this is. That is not going to be like this thing. That's a, I still have to, but you can find me on Twitter at at sign M O R B I D C U R I O U S T Y. It's basically morbid curiosity, but misspelled and you can see it somewhere. I'm sure. Cause Jose is good about that shit. Um, yeah, I talk, I used, I used to drop a lot of hot takes. I still kind of do, but most of the time I try to just make some more nuanced discussions and retweet when he's be retweeted. The current, the current, the current big thought is, for the love of God, right. cis and even some trans people, please stop fucking promoting gender bends. They're so sexist and normalize a lot of shitty things. And I now have to make a whole video on it. I couldn't get into 2021 without seeing it on the first day. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm, I am glad that you're the, the official, official uh, fifth member, Blaine. It's good to have you. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, by Happy birthday. the way. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, Corey, find... where can people find you? <laughs> Wait, what? Aside oh, from in the you're vent. Funny. Uh, no, you've been kind of sus lately. I think it's you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they can find me pretty much uh, on Twitch, Twitter, <laughs> Instagram um, as Celtic Scribe. So I, I stream Mondays and Tuesdays, Mondays at 4 p.m., Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Come watch me. We write, we world, we world build. And we play some fun story driven and horror games as well. So awesome. Hi, uh, Mesa. Um, where can people find, find me on you? Twitter at underscore realmless? I don't, I mean, like, I tweet some, 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 some often. And um, every once in a while, I'll stream uh, for my YouTube account, which is uh, Video Game Rem. Uh, I have a like four year old uh, playthrough of uh, uh, SMT3 Nocturne that I'm going through. So um, you can catch up if you want. I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. a hell of a glowing recommendation. I wouldn't recommend it. You'd be a, yeah. you would be a gr you'd be a you'd be a great car salesman. <laughs> But yeah, um, <laughs> I yeah I I, I I I interact lightly, and when I do, I I it's pretty good. I think at least I I, I, I hype myself up a little bit. I think I think I think I think I got some pretty pretty good taste. I concur. <laughs> All 
All right, I guess that leaves me. Um, if you Google the Seth Rokage, you'll find me on literally everything. There's descriptions on every single one of my uh, social outputs. As for what I'm up to right now, there's this podcast, which is typically on Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. PST. Uh, currently working on a very big Doom Eternal uh, game design doc. It's currently at 15 pages. Mm-hmm. I'm debating if I want to put the article up before I I get the full video out, because that's going to take a week or two, just because you know, I'm already working full-time. This is just something I do on the side. But follow me on Twitter if you want to stay up to date with everything I do. I make a lot of puns. I make a lot of hot takes. I, I eat Gross. a lot of ranch. Um, Gross. Yeah, all oh, all uh, the good stuff I, in life. I forgot to give my <laughs> socials. Uh, I forgot that. Uh, uh, my Twitter is at right, Sarah of Mars. You can see it on my thing. I have a blog. It's uh, out here in this open space. I'm currently working on my top five uh, stories in video games of 2020, which I, I'm very excited to write the list because there's a lot of great stories I was really invested in. Uh, if if you go on my Twitter, you can see me un un unboxing. You can't see me if you're listening, but you can see me un unboxing this full copy of a uh, of the HR Geiger inspired game Dark Seed Two. I have taken out all the advertisements, all of everything from like 1995, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'm also going to be doing a. I'm working on an essay right now for my blog, uh, titled What. Silent Hill can learn about psychological horror from games like Hell, uh, Hellblade, and I'm working on that right now, and I'm very excited about it. Just started mm. up on it again after three months because I am very terrible at working on big essays. So uh, look out for that. Hopefully, within the next month and a half, I will have that done because it's because it is a chungus. It is very big. Yeah. It is very big. Big, uh, big <laughs> essays are, that are very daunting. I'm sure. I will. I will. I promise. I might send you a, li- like an early draft on it. Oh so. shit! <laughs> but so, um, yeah, just go ahead and keep your eye on the horizon for everyone's uh, output over here. My video essay should—I don't want to give a time right? on. I'm oh, fucking busy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> there you can you can find podcast content on a, on a near daily basis over on youtube uh the majority of those views come from unsubscribed people so at least i know people are clicking all my links whenever i post everywhere but uh subscribing would also be quite nice what you got to lose? It, it's, um, free. it's free to subscribe. yeah any any last words from anyone <laughs> well it's free to follow not to subscribe yeah. <laughs> exactly no i mean no i mean on youtube it, it's free to subscribe. oh yeah yeah, yeah no, on youtube yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Are we, doing, on are we doing a hey kids? Free take to the green paper out of your parents' wallet <laughs> and go to www.twitch.com. Hell yeah. Or dot TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right. I any any closing comments by anyone? Conspiracy theory, but I won't go into it or anything. I will just drop this bomb on everybody and then we can talk about it later. Oh, no. But my conspiracy theory. Oh, no. Is actually that Silent Hills was never actually canceled. Uh, that's not a conspiracy theory, buddy. That's been fucking for <laughs> years. That's a that's a. Be- all right, all right. We'll, s- we'll save it for canceled, next time. Please, just let, you know, off this ride. Just let it you die. Know, you know, the whole Silent Hills was never real. <laughs> PT was never real. We all collectively thought all right. about it. But yeah, just, <laughs> it's the end of this episode, everybody. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye bye. It's just a shit post. We love.